It's time for Twit This Week in Tech Odakta. Join Stacey Higginbotham and film girl Christina Warren. Of course, we're going to talk about the big Apple event coming up this week, our predictions. We'll also visit Grumpy Cat and find out. We're going to blow the lid off the Grumpy Cat scam. The whole thing. We'll find out why Ozzy Osbourne wants his genome sequenced and how you can rent the Aviato Mobile. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit This Week in Tech, episode 578, recorded September 4th, 2016. Bitch and Betty says, pull up! This Week in Tech is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the simplest way to create a cover page or beautiful website for your portfolio, your blog, your business, or your online store. Enter the offer code TWIT and get 10% off. And by Carbonite. Keep your business safe this year. Protect files on your computer or server with automatic cloud backup from Carbonite. Try it free, no credit card needed, at Carbonite.com today. And use the offer code TWIT to get two free bonus months when you decide to buy. And by FreshBooks, the super simple cloud accounting software that's giving thousands of freelancers and small businesses the tools to save time billing and get paid faster. Try it free at FreshBooks.com slash TWIT. And by Wealthfront. Wealthfront is a low-cost automated investment service and the most sophisticated way to invest your money. Whether you've got millions or you're just starting out, visit Wealthfront.com slash TWIT and sign up to get your free personalized investment portfolio. That's Wealthfront.com slash TWIT. It's time for TWIT This Week in Tech, the show where we cover the latest tech news. Wow, we've got a massive audience for our Labor Day weekend show. For those of you outside the United States, it's a day we celebrate labor by not working. That makes sense. We're with us here. Who is the three people who are working? Owen J.J. Stone. Oh, doctor, nice to see you again. I just realized that it's Labor Day and I shouldn't be here laboring. Uh -huh. So I'm going to take a relaxing chill. I might go get a drink or a beer. Get a drink, or get a beer. Or something. Yep. Because this is, I should be upset right now. What can't we do, though? I think we can't wear white shoes after today. I think that's No, can't, you can't wear white after Labor Day. Yep. <laughs> you sure can. <laughs> that's one of the rules. I forget what movie that's from. It's from like one of those... Um, I don't wear white shoes during any time of the year, but I, but I guess uh, this would be the bad time to wear white shoes. Uh, also with us, Christina Warren from her new gig. Hi, Christina. Great yeah. to see you. Great to see you too, Leo. Film girl. She was at Mashable. She's now a senior writer at Gizmodo. Big promotion. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I, I moved. Uh, I moved twelve floors. So that's that's the funny thing. I was You're in, in the Mashable same building. <laughs> I'm in the same building. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I know that, that 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 was sort of my joke. I was like, I was at Mashable for seven years, and as far away as I could get was twelve floors. So. <laughs> But the easy, so you, did you actually, I'm wondering, I'm seeing this vision of you with a box getting on the <laughs> Yeah, no, I, uh, although, uh, yeah, no, it may, I could have done that if I hadn't had a week off in between the oh, two gigs, but I had okay. a week off. So nice. that would have been a little weird. What'd you do I with think, your week like, off? Did you go somewhere and do something fun? I, yeah, I went to Atlanta and I visited my parents nice. and um, saw some friends and just uh, took care of some things. So it was nice. nice. Well, congratulations on the new job. Thank you. Also here from our show this week in Google, an expert on IoT. You may remember her from uh, GigaOM. In fact, Giga Stacy is still her handle on Twitter. Stacy Higginbotham, nice to see you. Great to be here. Host of the IoT podcast at iotpodcast.com with Kevin Tofel. What a great panel. I just want let's just sit and talk. We don't need to do news. Nothing's <laughs> going to happen anyway this week. It's going to be very slow the week after. Labor yeah, Day. there's. There, there, it's not like there are two nothing. major events happening on Wednesday. There's nothing. nothing happening. Wait a minute, two major events? I know there's an Apple event. Yeah, Sony, PlayStation uh, Four, whatever the hell oh, they're doing with it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take them one by one. The event uh, that Apple's doing will be uh, in San Francisco at the Bill Graham Memorial uh, Auditorium, where they've been having events lately. It's a big, big venue. It's a big venue. Yeah, this is, I think, but this is like their third or fourth event that they've done there because um, they did the iPhone event last year. They did WWDC, and I don't remember where they did the iPad Pro event, the, the smaller iPad Pro event in March. That it might have been at Bill Graham. This it might is going to be one of the last Fortino. events they do uh, that, that's not at their 
uh, new corporate headquarters because that should be open by early. Next yeah, that year. should be open soon. Although I'm, I'm not sure if if that will be big enough for them to bring in all the press that they want to bring in. So I mean, it's, it's possible they could still do these, you know, in San Francisco. But it, it's interesting that they've they've you know basically. Um, gone away from using Moscone and and right. just started using Bill Graham. So when are you you're flying out? I presume I am. I am. So I fly out on Tuesday. Wait a minute. Yeah. You work for Gizmodo. I do. <laughs> but you got the Christina Warren invitation, not the Gizmodo. <laughs> invitation. I mean, is Gizmodo so still? No, Gizmodo's been going to these events, right? No, they haven't. They, they, they haven't. went. I think they went to the Apple Watch one. So I guess two years ago was was one that they were invited That's to. That's when the I embargo, the 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 banning was first and, and broken. Was first broken, and then that was the last event they've been really? to. Really? So this is yeah. So so this is, is the first that, one. Is Moto's choice, or does Apple uh, not invite them? Uh, to my knowledge, it was not their choice. So I mean, interesting. Look, so so this, yeah, and but, this goes back if for people not paying exactly microscopic attention to everything that happens at Apple back to the iPhone 4S, right? Where it was left in a bar. It was the iPhone 4. I don't 4. know. I mean, you know, look, that was that was six years before I joined the company. I'm I just know, you're happy not responsible. To <laughs> and uh, the, it was left in a bar. Somebody picked it up. This is before its release. And then uh, so eventually sold it uh, to Gizmodo, which did stories on it. Brian Lamb did stories on it. And then the police came and they broke in the house and they took all his computers, and uh, and nothing came of it. But except Gizmodo stopped getting invited to Apple events. So congratulations on breaking the uh, <laughs> embargo. Is it? Yeah. Did, did Apple know though when you joined? Oh yeah, they knew. Or when they yeah. issued? Okay. It went to your Gizmodo yeah. address, not to your personal address. Exactly. Oh, interesting. Okay. See, see, it's a new Apple. They invite everybody. <laughs> They're going to need all the press they can get when they take this headphone jack out of the phone. Oh, come oh, on man. with the headphone jack. All right, let's talk about it. So, uh, actually, I keep, I'm seeing conflicting rumors now, which is good because otherwise it would be deathly dull since usually now, by now, we know everything that Apple's going to announce. It's going to be some little thing like how many milliamp hours the battery has that will be a surprise. Except I saw a couple of people run stories saying, not Mark Gurman. Mark Gurman's been consistent. He's, of course, the kind of the leader on all of this. He's formerly at 9 to 5 Mac. He's now at Bloomberg. He seems to have very good sources. He says, no, no, it's going to be an iPhone 7, 7 Plus. The 7 Plus mm -hmm. will have dual cameras. The 7 Plus will not have a headphone jack. But I've seen other stories from other people saying there were going to be three phones. There was going to be an iPhone yeah. 7, 7 Plus, and 7 Pro. The Pro no. was the dual camera model. No? No, I mean, I th I've seen that story too. I don't. That never made sense to me. I think what... It's more likely, and and I'd love you guys' feedback. Good. What I gather is they were probably at some point testing different devices, and they probably were looking at maybe making an iPhone, like having, I don't even know if three devices. I think they probably just iteratively designed the larger phone. And so three different chassis leaked, and one of them was presumably, you know, the uh. 7 Plus. One of them, what they were calling the 7 Pro, which had the, the smart connector and the dual camera system. Um, but I, I mean, you know, every leak that we've had from 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 both uh, uh, Ming Chao and from um, um, uh, Mark Gurman has basically been pegging on this this dual camera system for for quite some time. And so I, I saw this where I think Forbes was kind of like, oh, you know, they they, they decided not to release three models. It was right. like, there were never going to be three models. Okay. I don't okay. think. I yeah. don't think there were ever going to be three models. There's I think it was some... always going to be the small and the big. This is, I mean, come on. This is, normally Apple does TikTok. This would be a new design. They're, we already know based on the leaked body uh, pictures. And I think those are probably accurate, right? Yeah, I think so. We know yeah, that it's I mean, not going to be much point. of a new design. In fact, this might be a very dull event. This might just at, be, hey, we kind of put a new processor in there. We added an extra lens. At this point, what can they do? And, you know, again, no matter what they do, they're going to tell you that it's the greatest thing on earth and of that you course. should feel special about yourself right. and that you won't be whole unless you have the phone. So, you know, I, I mean, think they're going to have trouble selling this one. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Yeah. What? You know, but that's... <laughs> First of all, the, why do you say stuff like that? You say stuff like that to agitate me. Um, <laughs> it, it's not like it's an iPad. They have problems selling iPads right now. They don't have problems with these phones. People like well, if for nothing no, else. No, the growth, no, the no, growth, no, no, the growth rate of, of the, the phones. phones has dropped considerably. When they launch, when the phone, when a new phone launches in a series, they don't usually have a problem moving the units of the phone. Now, by the time they get to the uh, the S versions, yes, there is a, uh, off of a cliff. But this is an SS. This is not much of a change. 
How do you know? We don't even have seen it yet. <laughs> okay, you're we right. We don't even know how much I'm, of the change I, is. Okay. Actually, isn't this right about when uh, Apple would have released articles to, or, you know, sourced stories to the Wall Street Journal and other? This is typically what, what Apple would have done by now to kind of lower expectations to say, you know, well, uh, but we haven't seen that this year, have we? Have we seen those kind of... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think the the big news here is obviously going to be the, the camera on the larger phone and then the, the lack of the headphone jack. Those are the two things that at least from from what has leaked so far are, are going to be kind of kind of the big the big moment. So I think I'm really interested in seeing how they're going to sell and convince this whole that's going to be no headphone jack thing. Yeah. That, they're going to see according to Ming Chi Kuo. There is going to be a lightning ear pods bundled in. Yes. And a connector, uh, an adapter, through a lightning yeah, 3.5 millimeter. Yeah, there, there, was, there was a leak of, of, of a, it looks like a box that showed a couple things. One, 256 gigabyte size. So at least on the larger phone, you can get a 256 Some gigabyte people phone. So that's good. have gone as far as to say, in a, I've seen people say this, in a couple of years, you'll wonder why they ever had a headphone jack. I mean, I think if they can do wireless audio correctly... And, and I don't know if now is actually the, the time, but I think if they can, I think that that could be, for for most people, I think that that might be accurate. Um, we've seen this big trend. Really? And honestly, I do. because it I, I, floppy. I, I, no. I, it's not, I but, but I do. Sorry, until we have No, until we have good wireless charging for all these extra power-sucking devices, I think it's a mistake. I don't want to charge my headphones. Exactly. I really don't. And I have I, mean, I have all Bluetooth wireless stuff. But first of all, think of children, and one extra thing for think them to have of the charge children. Exactly. To <laughs> think of the children. Like, the children and then are on, fine. And then on and then on top of that, I don't know if anybody's watched any kind of video. Watch Netflix with a Bluetooth headset, and tell me you're right. not watching a, a 1940s Chinese film. Well, yes. they could no. use. There's a newer Bluetooth spec. I'm sure Stacy, you're up on this. AptX that supposedly yep. is even higher fidelity than A2DP. It's not the fidelity I worry so much about, is the connectivity, which drops. And and as you point right. out, battery life. Battery well, charge. the battery life. And, 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 well, in addition to, to the blue, newer Bluetooth spec, there's something called NFMI, which um, we're seeing from some other headphone makers, or pe people like uh, like Doppler Labs, who are making you know the, the Hear One wireless headphones, which will be out later this, this fall. Is, this is hearing aid technology, NFMI. Uh, yeah, right? basically. And, and, and that's, though, they, they feel like they, because I've talked to them, they, they basically said that they feel like they've completely nailed um, near field magnetic latency. induction. Yeah. So that means and, it's and a wireless charging wireless. Well, I mean that that that's for the that's for the the, the sync issues. Um, for for charging, I mean that's that becomes a much more difficult kind of scenario. Although if you can have, I mean we've seen this with a lot of kind of the, the wireless buds that are out now, where they have charging cases where you can pop them in a charging case for you know. 15, 20 I minutes. NF, I NF have more charging cases right now, and that's that's not viable. I have the Motorola Hint, so that's yeah. one way Motorola solved it. So, of course, a little thing in your ear isn't going to have much battery life, so they include a case that's a larger battery. You charge right. the case, and then that stays charged, and it gives you multiple charges on the little earpiece, so you put your earbuds away in a case. Right. Hmm. Let me ask you guys this, though. I mean, look, I, I agree. Like I think that solving a problem that doesn't exist. What's wrong with headphones? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but but I but, but I guess to play devil's advocate, because look, I I came to terms with the fact the headphone jack is going away like ten months ago, like nine months ago, like as soon as the rumors really started kicking off, like in January, I was like, okay, it's gone. I've got to come to terms with this, not because I'm okay with it, not because I feel like it's necessarily a good decision, just because this is what the reality is going to be, and and I'm an iPhone user, and my next phone will be an iPhone, and so I need to get used to using dongles and and deal with it. But let me ask you guys this: I mean, they're going to be including these Lightning earpods in the box since most people most people do use the included headphones with their phone they, they don't use third-party headphones even like i wonder if a lot of this is kind of overblown in terms of you know everybody freaking out about it when most people are just going to use the headphones that come with their phone to begin with and they're just going to continue to use the phone the headphones that are there use lightning headphones that yeah. sounds like a totally logical and reasonable explanation but then when you ask the real reality of life how many times has a cable like this and a headphone set broken on you yeah. and how long do well, these totally. lightning crap cables from apple last <laughs> because i'll tell you what they don't last very long so now not only do i have to pay 30 40 dollars for a new dongle and then the earpiece that's already broken i've got apple headsets that i've had for five years now that still work i've got dongles that don't last three months Stacy, so, does your kid, my kids came to me, do your kids, does your daughter come to you and say, I lost my headphones, can I have a new pair? And I have a drawer 
full of cheap, normal headphones. That's Instead of my kid, it's me. It's you. I lose, but, I lose my headphones but, all the time. And they just work. But, but, but lightning headphones are not going to be cheap because you've got to pay mm -hmm. the Apple tax uh, on it. By the way, let's look at this NFMI. Is, is this your opinion, uh, Christina, that this will also be part of this? I don't think it'll necessarily be part of this, but I do know that that's just a standard that people are using. It's so interesting. If it's not, now, the so company it's not, that makes this Freelink has it totally patent encumbered, by the way. Yeah. You can only so, get it through Freelink. I, I'm, I'm certainly not I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that's going to be something that, that Apple launches, but I know for a fact that other headphone makers are looking at it. So I feel like... So Apple's it's kind of a replacement of for Bluetooth. It's another yeah. form of PAN, personal area network, that uses magnetic inductance low power induct i just i can see the the people there are already people who think wi-fi causes brain damage <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna look at this and say you're gonna shoot magnets through my head no it those creates... people are wearing magnets it's okay oh okay. oh that's right <laughs> just tell them it's good for their health yeah it's a it's a, a a secure wireless bubble around each user using a low power inductive antenna inside the bubble devices connect instantly outside they're invisible. And FMI is the only technology that could be used where secure and reliable PAN solutions are needed. Apparently, they use it in the armed forces on the battlefield, so your tactical headset can't be broken into. What is the distance on that? Good it's question. fairly small from, from, from what I understand, but I mean, but it'd be enough, you know, for if you've got like your, your, your head, you know, it'd be, I think, I think it's probably, you know, 10 or 11 feet. I'm not really sure. And the radio has to be in the headset and in the phone? No, it just has to be in the headset. Wow. This is really so, cause, cause interesting. Because I, I know a company that's already working on, on, a, on a product that will that'll be out like this fall that will, that will, have, that will use this. So, and I, I was talking to them the other day. Um, and so I feel like whether Apple uses something like that or not, who knows. But I feel like what what's at least exciting about this, even if you think that this is a, a worthless, you know, exercise, it's 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 stupid for them to get rid of the jack, and that's that that's a valid thing to say. But I think even if you accept that, the fact that they are getting rid of the jack is going to force, I think, whether it's Bluetooth or NFMI or any of these other things, it's going to force people to start taking wireless seriously. And we haven't had a lot of advancement in wireless technology when it comes to headphones, you know, in, in the last 10 years or so, we just, it, it really hasn't improved. Wouldn't that be but, interesting if Apple used this as an, as an opportunity? Because I agree with you, the, the, the rhetoric that Apple uses on Wednesday will be fascinating to watch. If they do remove the headphone jack, they're going to have to have a story, right. a compelling story, why? Well, the advancement of things, that, again, that sounds great. Because, again, when I use headphones, I can't watch video or like the audio just isn't as clear. Like when you plug in the physical line, you can just feel and hear the difference. So if we're going to make great advancements at the push of Apple with their iron fist, then that's great. If that turns out to be the case, giving me one more thing to charge. <laughs> but we're always going to have one more thing to charge. Yeah, We've been steadily going, being conditioned to like lower quality, lower resolution on all audio i mean think landline to cell phone i know i hate think about that, our though i hate that, streaming but. music it's streaming yeah it's unnecessary I mean, so this may just be another departure from like not five nines because it's not reliability it's just quality, quality. We're I, I, know, I mean less there are a lot of people uh neil Di uh, neil diamond neil young <laughs> And maybe Neil Diamond, Aww. for that matter. Neil Young, who think that uh, it's a terrible thing that musicians are making music that uh, there's a whole generation can't even hear because they're listening on crappy earbuds. Yeah. Apple right. might make the case. Apple loves music, right? Maybe they'll make the case. Yeah. Well, those earbuds aren't good. We're going to make you really good headphones, and we can do it better. Oh, it's going to cost so much money. <laughs> and you lose those all the time. I mean, I can see why... Apple hates wires. I totally can. Yeah. I mean, they're they're they clunky. hate buttons. They hate wires. Yeah, they hate it's all, they want. They would love it if they had a glass slab with no controls, nothing. That would be the perfect thing, right? Yeah. No interface, nothing. Just yeah, yeah a operate bar of, a bar of soap. Telepathic. Just, that's exactly yeah. it. You get a chip in your head and you interact with your phone. Hey, where is by the way? Where is uh, Johnny Ive these days? I have you don't see him or hear him or anything. Is he on? Is he on vacation for the last three years? What's going on with Johnny Ives? He's doing the new MacBooks. He's got to be doing something, yeah. right? Maybe he's in yeah, Ireland, Mac hanging out with that tax shelter. 
<laughs> he seems like he's just just disappeared. Will we see? No, we'll All right, here's your bingo we'll card. Watch. You got to do a bingo card with an Apple event. Will there be a Johnny Ive sighting on Wednesday? Yeah, I think so. Will there be a Johnny Ive White Room video on Wednesday? Say, will we hear aluminium? That's really uh, the question. <laughs> I mean, Ooh, that is the big question. Uh, when I interviewed him last year, I actually I made him say I uh, I I didn't make him I I I, I politely requested. Johnny, I said, what is this phone made of, Johnny? No, no, no but, but I very politely said I was like, can you just say aluminium for oh, me that's once? Cute. And 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 he he did, but um I I think I think that was much to the chagrin of everyone else in the room. I think they were like, you really just oh, asked. Christina, <laughs> you are so crass. <laughs> but, but I mean, but I, I, I was no, like, this I is the only that. opportunity I'm ever going to have in my Johnny, entire life. Ask him. Johnny, what are these phones made out of, Johnny? <laughs> Aluminium, Christina. I told you four times already. <laughs> probably Aluminium. He probably no, says it's asleep at this point. Aluminium. Uh, but uh, no, I, I bet we see him, and I bet I bet there is a video, especially if they're showing off uh, the new camera system. Yeah. Is he the guy who tells the story of the missing headphone jack? I don't know. It's not I Phil Schiller. Gonna, I don't trust Phil Schiller. Not Phil Schiller. No, no. They have to get some sort of audio expert, somebody yeah. on there. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm with you guys. I almost wonder if, if they are going to, they're not going to be as crazy about it as, as Neil Young, but maybe if they're going Hi, to start making I'm Todd Rundgren. You may remember me. <laughs> <laughs> right? The, the thing is, no matter what they say, it's a lie. It is not better to have wireless sound right. than it is to have wired sound. So the spin move on that is something only Apple can do in a turtleneck uh, white room environment to try and trick people and mesmerize them into thinking that something's real when it's They'll not. Get, yeah. They'll get Bono to tell the story. Bono. That's yeah. <laughs> Great. A and, deaf and, 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 rock star. And, 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 I can't hear and, anything, <laughs> but if I could, I wouldn't use a headphone jack. And then everybody will get a free album that they didn't want again. <laughs> touch me, yeah. Tim. Touch me. Um, Taylor, Swift. About, Taylor Swift. Talk, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. She's young. She's still got good hearing. Taylor Swift. Hi. You got, this you is got 30 things on here. We got 30 things on here besides this. I know. It's boring. Apple and you know what? Okay, I'm going to drop movie. it. We're going to move on. But I'm just saying, it's maybe it's me. Maybe I've finally hit it. Because I've seen this happen with many of the tech journalists I've worked with over the years. You get to a point where you just stop caring. Mm -hmm. And I just, I feel so, I, maybe I'm just jaded. But I just... This is not an i. I'm not. I'm not going to buy this iPhone. I don't. I come I don't, on, dude. Of course you are. You know you are. Say, That's such a lie. Like, That's such a lie. Why would you lie? You, you know you are. Definitely going to buy one. You know and, you are. Here, you have to buy here's one. Here's the thing. If you buy it and want to get rid of it, just send it to me and I'll take it. But don't tell me you're not going to buy it. You know what? I did get rid of my Galaxy Note Seven. We'll tell that tale Woo. in a Before moment. Before it blew up. Well, would you plug it in after reading all that? I surely oh, no. would. I'd pl not only would I plug it in. I'd plug it in 24-7, 365, carry it Hoping in Hoping it blew up. And hope to Jiminy Christmas, my pocket went a smolder. And I'll tell you what. I did kind of, I admit, I kind of, I kind of wanted flames to leap out of it. Man, it'd be, it'd be stone sung by the time I'm yeah. done with them. Obscure tech journalist, podcaster, phone explodes. No one cares. <laughs> oh, somebody's uh, caring. I got a lawyer for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it burns. It burns. All right, we'll talk about that. But first, let's talk about Squarespace, the place to make your next website. I was talking to somebody the other day, actually it was on the radio show, who has a different hosting company. I won't name names. I don't want to shame anybody. He said, I don't understand. I updated my Chrome and my site looks different. The menu, instead of going this way, goes sideways. <laughs> I said, oi, oi, oi. This is, uh, I don't know why that happened, but let me tell you, it wouldn't happen with a Squarespace site. You want to have, uh, you, first of all, if you're getting, if you're going to have a website, and you should, every company, every individual, <clears throat> it's your best way to control your image, your presence on the web is to have your own website. And you've got something to say. You've got a unique point of view. You need somewhere to put it. And putting it on Facebook, with all due respect, or Twitter, that's not that's not enough. That's not your page. That's their page. That's Mark's page. Put it on your page. So you want a web host that's going to give you a great looking page that reflects your aesthetic that lets you do, you know, your stuff, whatever it is, whether it's selling candles or uh, writing about uh, paint colors or whatever you love, and it does it in a way that is that you feel good about it, and that's Squarespace. And by the way, extremely affordable. Uh, every site looks professionally designed. You could do it yourself, by the way. If you are a CSS, JavaScript, HTML guru, 
a lot of people use Squarespace uh, like that, too, because you can start with a blank template that gives you all the under-the-covers engineering, but you get to design it exactly the way you want. They've got templates for everything. Some brand-new magazine-style templates include interactive features like grid-style landing pages. You know, you see these on, on all the big, you know, online magazines. Infinite Scroll, that's all the rage now, right? Um, you got related posts so people can explore more author profiles. And all of this comes with a, a basic account on squarespace.com. You can try it free. I want you to do that right now if you go to squarespace.com. Uh, just press the Get Started button. Pick a template. Oh, and one of the nice things is you're not, you know, your template and your content are completely separate, as they ought to be. So if you say, huh, I don't know, let me try a different one. You, you're, you're, your template can change with your mood. Every one of them, though, mobile responsive, so you don't have a separate mobile site. Your site looks great on every size screen. When you upload images... Uh, behind the scenes, the Squarespace software automatically creates nine different sizes so that they have an image to fit the screen it's on. Um, they they have e-commerce on every site, so you can always sell something. And and by the way, it's, I think it's the only e-commerce that where your store matches the rest of your site. It matches your aesthetic. That's really nice. They now do domain names. So you don't even have to go to a separate registrar. That makes it very easy to get a custom domain. In fact, you've always gotten a free one with an annual purchase, but now you can purchase directly from Squarespace domains. Register your domain. And uh, unlike a lot of these other places, they'll give you a parking page that's clean, that's spam-free, that's gorgeous, so that you have time to start building. It's never been easier to sell online. Power your business with Squarespace Commerce. They just re re introduced analytics for commerce, which is really helpful. You can see... You know, the traffic in real time, that's kind of fun to put that up on the on the wall at your office. You can see when people abandon your checkout, that's important to know. Device filtering, how are they coming to your site? And if you uh, are, and there are people who do this for a living. In fact, uh, when Lisa wanted to create a site for her new agency, um, I she said, would you do it? I said, no. But Squarespace has these great people who work independently, but use Squarespace as their platform. And she found somebody did it for a very reasonable price, did a wonderful site for her. Uh, that's uh, um, artisanalagency.com if you want to take a look at it. Oh, and that's another nice thing. You could all go there at once, and it wouldn't bring it down. Squarespace sites just never go down. Anybody who's built or contributes to three or more active websites gets access to something new. This is the Squarespace Circle. It includes advanced guides, optimized support, and six-month trial periods for new projects. That's nice. A million customers and growing and still going strong. And yes, they still can. They never go down. Squarespace.com. There's only one thing I'd ask. If you decide to set up a Squarespace site for free, if you decide to buy after you play with it for a while, use our offer code TWIT. That way they know you heard about it here. Because I know Squarespace has ads everywhere now, right? Even the Super Bowl. But you'll also get 10% off as a thank you. So there you go, squarespace.com. Don't forget the offer code. Twitter. We're talking tech. Three fun people. Stacey Higginbotham, just love having her on This Week in Google every week. She does a podcast with Kevin Toffel on uh, Internet of Things. She just came back from the Intel Developers Forum. She really is keeping up on this very interesting space. Nice to have you, Stacey. From Austin, Texas. And also with us from uh, her brand new uh, job at Gizmodo, senior writer at Gizmodo, film girls here, Christina Warren. Hi, Christina. Hello. Always a pleasure. And oh, Dr. Owen J.J. Stone. I was just on your podcast. What's that? And I should be on a beach, but I'm stuck here with you, <laughs> laboring away <laughs> hey, on my is, Labor Day weekend. Is that the sunscreen where it, you squirt it on and it's purple? Um, I love that this stuff. Is, this is for the kids, so I don't know what happens. You know what I'm talking about? You squirt on. it. Yeah, it's for kids, and then you I know because you put it purple, and then you just rub it in, it disappears. But you know that I don't, you've got. I don't use sunscreen, so I've never had the pleasure of doing that. Can I ask you a personal question? Sure, you can. Uh, do you need? Do people uh, African Americans need sunscreen? And sadly, I've never burned in my life. I've never had the pleasure of my skin flaking aren't you and protected? peeling. You're protected. Stuff. I got some built-in natural yeah. stuff that works out pretty well. Like it, I have to sit out in the sun but, for like ten hours to get even get a. Tan it strikes me darker. you should still wear sunscreen because of skin cancer. Pe people yeah. say that, but I just my a lot of my family members that when I was younger they're like I never wore it, and people lived and died of other things, but nobody's dying of skin cancer. Okay, so it's one less thing for me to do on the beach. That's awesome, nice. Yeah. 
what's the name of your podcast? And when am I? When is my episode going to appear? Oh, it's Doc Tales. I put it up the other day. Oh, I good. didn't tweet it out. I just tweeted it out. Tweet today. it out, man. I gotta publicize I did. it. The the title is Five Hundred Pounds of Cheese. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> we, we had, randomly had a conversation about cheese. We had what uh, they euphemistically call a wide ranging conversation. Oh, and I found an interview we did together from like 2010. I put that up as a bonus also that people wow. can go and listen to the lineage of Was Laporte. Was my voice higher back then? Uh, you looked a little younger. You were a little bit more spry. It was back when you were still in the cottage. I was spry you back were still, then. You were still in the cottage. <laughs> Anybody seen me so. move know that spry is not the word. <laughs> Maybe wizened? Uh, creaky? Creaky sounds good. Yeah, Doc Tales. Where would we, where would we find that? IQMZ.com is sitting up there. It's on my Twitter. It's on my Facebook. IQMZ.com. Four letters. I quit my zebra. Zombie. Zombie.com. So I got an email from uh, T-Mobile <laughs> saying, uh, <laughs> stop charging your, 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 uh, your Samsung uh, Note 7 because it could blow up. Yeah. 35 yeah. people have phones have blown up. Now, that's not a lot when you sell more than a million. Uh, it's no, but it is. No, actually, it is. When when you look at like whatever, like Six Sigma or like whatever the, the things are for these things, I actually think that 35 reported cases is significant. iPhones had a problem once, but they didn't have anywhere near that number, right? No, and, no, and, and in those cases, it was, it was, I think, proven to be the unofficial cables. Right. Uh, in this case, uh, Samsung's taking a one and a half billion what we think it'll be a one and a half billion dollar write-off because they've sold more than a million of them how many do we know a lot i bought one a lot uh my parents both bought one i i and i feel bad it's a great I, phone yeah i've been recommending yeah. it right i've been telling everybody this is the phone uh, if you're going to get an android device this is my current favorite um so you stop using it yeah, never had any problems with it. You know, I charge it fast charging. I normally charge it on a wireless, slow wireless charger overnight. So, Was, can I borrow? I, I don't mind rolling hot? the dice. No, it doesn't get hot. Okay, that's good because we were getting because after I wrote the initial story that they were like delaying production this is before the, the, the recall i got a number of emails from people saying that theirs was getting like very hot to the touch and so and again i mean i i think that it's that's probably, a bad sign right yeah and and so i think yeah it is and so i you know i don't know how widespread this is i think it could be probably i think it's probably was was maybe one one a couple of batches probably down to one supplier if they were to really go back and see so it was probably it, yeah, one supplier they're not, but they're not doing this in china and they say well it's a different right. battery so, you know, we know what this is caused by. Lithium-ion batteries are, uh, you know, anything that contains a lot of energy is always, a, could be potentially dangerous, whether it's gasoline or batteries. In the case of lithium-ion batteries, if you overcharge them, and this is true, by the way, of other batteries, too. If you overcharge them, they can swell up, uh, they can heat up, and in fact, they can get so hot, they can burn. And if they swell even more while they're burning, they can explode and really, it's like napalm. I mean, apparently, it could get on your skin and it would cause severe burns. It's not a good thing. I'm not trying to detract from 35 because I feel like 35 is a large number. But at the same time, also, you know, people get a paranoia in their mind of when they think something's hot. My iPhone sets a blaze when I talk on it for more than 20 Most minutes. Most phones get hot. When you Most modern yeah, when that's you touch true. it. That's true. So it's like, I mean, when you think to yourself, like, is it hot to the touch? Like, a every phone, when you talk on it or do anything on it for more than ten minutes, it gets hot. Like literally, like but when you if you put it to your face, you can feel hot it. while it's so. working is a different kind of hot. That's the processor getting hot versus hot while it's not working but simply charging. That means the my battery's getting hot. True. Okay. Story. Well, my phone actually gets hot while charging. It's the it's the Nexus oh five X. So it's got the rapid charging, and I noticed that when it charges, it does get hotter yeah. than my previous phones. Rapid charging, I think, is widely agreed not to be a good idea. That's hard on batteries. In fact, we had a battery expert here. We talked a lot after the show last week. Uh, he does. He's a researcher, and uh, he said heat is the enemy for lithium ion. Uh, it reduces the life. He told me, and I should tell you, Stacy, because you also drive a Tesla, don't park your Tesla in the sun, park it in the shade. Dude, I am so screwed. I live in Austin, I Texas. I know, I know. <laughs> but he said the phone manufacturers know all this. They know quick charging heats up 
You know, Tesla says don't use the supercharger too much. Same reason. It'll lower the life of your battery. But phone companies go, you're only going to have that phone for a couple of years. It's never intended to be owned for longer. So we don't really care if we're reducing battery life. It's far more important that we have quick charging. Do you know what I do with my phone in the car? I stick it in the air conditioning vent face Smart. down so the sun's not yeah. beating on it and it stays cool as a crisp. Because I'm usually streaming stuff. I got movies streaming and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Download cool. my music. So it gets really hot. So I put it in the vent and it stays cool as a cucumber and it stays happy. And I don't have to like restart it as much because I'm always like I use like 30, 40 gigs of data a month. So I'm always like killing this phone. Christina, did uh, Samsung go far enough? Did they do the right thing? Yeah, I, d I definitely think so. Um, I mean, look, they they started seeing, you know, that the, uh, the problem was existing. They immediately stopped shipments. Then they did an investigation and realized, okay, this is maybe more widespread than we thought. And are, and I are doing the full recall, you know, working with the carriers, doing the exchanges. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely treating this the way that it needs to be treated, which is, look, you know, at least so far it hasn't been, you know, no one's been, been seriously hurt or anything, and that's a very good thing. Yeah, do we know? Have um, we, I mean, I've seen some pictures, but do we, do we know people who have had the phone burn? No, I, 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 so far I don't believe we've seen any of those. Yeah. I mean, we've just seen, like, and all the photos have been from, from Asia, at least that I've seen. I haven't seen any reported yeah. cases in the United States, but that doesn't mean that people have been hurt, but at least so far it looks like no one has, which is a very good thing. No, I think they're, I think they've handled this the exact way they needed to handle it. Uh, and, and by basic, I mean, you know, you can't force people to come in and do a one-to-one -one swap, but but by making it as easy as possible, and and by the fact that the carriers are sending out the emails, that's huge. Here's the uh, email I got from T-Mobile. Samsung notified us today they're recalling Galaxy Note 7 due to battery safety concern. That <laughs> I don't know who wrote this, but there have been 35 cases reported globally as of September 1st. Samsung has communicated to us they will have replacement Note 7 devices that should be available in the next two to four weeks. Okay, that's a problem right there. Mm -hmm. As a customer, your safety is our number one priority. We're making it easier for you to return and exchange your Galaxy Note 7 free of charge. Sign up. We'll let you know. This is one option. By the way, Consumer Reports says this is a terrible option. Sign up and we'll let you know when the new phone's available. In other words, keep using it. Or switch to a new device. Samsung and T well, at least T-Mobile says, and I imagine all the carriers will, we'll have something you can use until the new phone comes. Or return the phone for a full refund. And that's what Samsung's saying is we will buy back every one of them. We don't care where you got it. If you don't right. want it, we will buy it back. But the problem is if it's your only phone, you'll be no one wants to be without a phone for two to four weeks. Right, right. I mean, and, and, and that, that's, I mean, that puts them in a weird quagmire position, which I think is why a lot of the carriers are saying, look, you can, you can swap it out for a different phone. And then when we get them in stock, right. swap it back out again. Um, or you know uh, some you know some of the, the the retailers are saying that they'll have new stock next week. Uh, you know I, I think it just depends on the person how comfortable you are keeping it and for how long. But um, I mean, if you if you're really concerned, there are going to be alternatives that you can do, and you can always just swap it out with your carrier and say, hey, you know I, I need I, I I now that you have the Galaxy Note Seven in stock, I want to go back and get that again. Consumer Reports says Samsung hasn't gone far enough because this is not an official recall. If it were an huh. official recall, they would go to the, C the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the CPSC, and declare an official recall. At that point, it would be illegal to sell the Note 7 in the United States. And according to Consumer Reports, some retailers are still selling the phone as late as Friday. So Samsung has not gone to the full length that they should if, uh, if at least according to Consumer Reports, they ought to. Consumer Reports has kind of turned into the cranky, the cranky nanny of... Yeah, they I might, mean, I guess... They might have found out... Sorry, they might have found out some information about where the batch that they came from and feel confident that it's not going to continue to happen yeah. and be a continued issue, possibly. Here's, a, here's an image of a... This is from China, yeah. uh, Hyung Wan Shin... Mm. Uh, that is not Terrible. pretty. No, it's not. That is a pretty no, it, nasty burn right there. And that's, by the yeah. way, right where the battery is, is. As I remember, it's a long battery, and that's about where it would be on the left side of the phone as you're looking at it from the front. Uh, you wouldn't want that to happen in your house. I mean, that's why Samsung's taking this series seriously. 35 phones is enough to say, hmm. Yeah, and I, I do have to say, I mean, it is, I mean, Consumer Reports might have a point in that maybe they should do an official recall and make it illegal to sell it or whatever. But I also have to think that they're working with all the retailers. They're working with um, all, all the carriers. Um, 
maybe other than the, the, the maybe some, some web places, I can't imagine any place after Friday, I can't imagine any place continuing to sell the phone just for their own liability reasons. By the way, according you know? to the New York Times, it's two and a half million Note 7. Two and a half million. Wow. That's a lot. It's a lot it of is. phones. All right. Well, I guess we've we've said enough. I mean, if you have a Note 7, I think you shouldn't take the chance. I think you should probably... Uh, Absolutely. trade it in i'm in the good position of having a lot of things i could use instead so it's not like i'm going to be phoneless uh but i am going to be out of the country when i would get if, if it's two weeks i won't be here so um you know what i'm going to just ask for my money back i've had a, I, I like the phone but i don't i don't you know there's, i hear there's new phones coming from other companies <laughs> are they all going to be waterproof uh, are they all going to be dust proof i know i know apple will never do that Little will little Wayne give back his champagne soaked? No, <laughs> so that's the question. No, never. Um, all right, but well, I think actually uh, Samsung's. I can't remember anybody. Apple's never done this. I can't remember anybody doing a recall of this magnitude for a smartphone. Not since the not since the not in smartphones. I mean, we had the the Sony laptop battery recall. Right. Oh remember yeah, that? that's right. Yeah. Same um, same reason. Same Didn't reason. Dell yeah. have a laptop battery. Yeah. Again, same reason. Yep. The same reason. Yeah. And I think that those, yeah, the, the Dell and laptop, the Sony laptop. The Dell but, was more like it would swell and, and torque and bend, although I presume that's the beginning of something bad. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to overcharge lithium ion batteries. So, yeah. The this way, is app, a big the way deal. people act about Bengate, I would, I would venture just to see if this were Apple, how people would lose right. their minds. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. I mean, I feel deal. like this is I a very Apple calm would do the same problem. Thing. Don't you think? Oh, no, not, yeah. I'm not oh, talking about Apple Apple's answering the, the problem. I'm talking about the the wave of people that would storm down the gates upon Apple. Yeah. Uh, the way they do about everything. Oh, the, my phone bent. They don't know what they're doing. Like right. the rage. Like everybody's like, okay, Samsung, you made a mistake. All right, you're on top of it. Okay, cool. We'll let it go. I think Samsung's getting Apple a free can't pass. Live no, like that. they're getting a free pass because they did the right thing and they did it quickly, uh, and no one was hurt and they responded exactly appropriately, even though. I think they're going to take a big hit on this. The timing could oh, yeah. be worse. The timing is terrible. The timing, Especially how popular this phone was. Your parents might exactly. end up uh, getting an iPhone, Stacy. Okay, my mom will never get an iPhone. but <laughs> I like your mom. She, she's not going to go there. Is but, she an iPhone yeah. hater? She's not a hater. She's just, they frustrate her. Really? And yes. She, and Android does not. I, I don't, yes. That's, it doesn't frustrate her. She likes it. Nice. She's... Yeah, not an iPhone person. Although the the increasing size of all the Androids for a while really upset her, but now she's like, with this one, she was like, "Holy cow, it's beautiful! I can finally see my screen." That's so. one of the things I like about this. This is a big phone with such small bezels that it doesn't feel like a big phone. It feels like a normal size phone with a giant screen somehow magically. Uh... And she loves the magnifying thing and then the t the tuning thing, which made me feel like, "Dang it, guys, we got to put more stuff on this design yeah. for older people." Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about the adapt sound that we mentioned on Twig. And yeah. I, I think a lot of people didn't know that Samsung does this. It buries it way deep in the settings. But you can actually do a hearing test on the phone with your earbuds in and then have the phone um, take the results of that and create a equalization curve tuned to your individual ears. And That's it, awesome. It produces a very good result. I do that with every Samsung phone I get. It's I don't know when they started, S6 maybe, but I, I love it. It's called Adapt Sound. It's in your sound settings. Uh, and they have a headphone jack, as they said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as <laughs> In their said. announcement, we have a headphone jack. It's not the first, uh, Apple's not the first company to abandon the headphone jack. The Moto Z does not have a headphone jack. Although it's that's not. not even out. I mean, I don't know when that's going to be widely available. Or, Do you think uh, Apple would ever go back on the headphone jack if, mm -hmm. like, no one else adopts it? Mm -hmm. No. Here's a question. Uh, no. Will Apple's they have two phones, one with and one without? No. No. They'll have. Well, no. Well, they will still sell the SE. SE so will the still SE, have a headphone so jack. The SE will still have it. Um, but no, I mean, I think that, and they're they're still going to sell. I presume, just like they have in past years, the 6s and the 6s Plus, they'll still sell those for less money. So you'll still be able to buy a phone with the headphone jack. But if you want yeah. all the fancy, you know, new hotness, bye bye. Going forward, going forward, they will not go back they're Agreed. definitively like define on things when they say a is a it's right. always going to be a from here on out right. yeah like, the only time i can ever i was Sorry, gonna go say on. even when it's a mistake they just force through it and they and then they make it the standard <laughs> The only time I can ever remember them going back ever was with Firewire um, on uh, 
on mm -hmm. one of the Macs. So when they released the first Unibody MacBook Pro, they also released a Unibody MacBook th at the same time. And the Unibody MacBook, this was this was like the successor to the uh, to, to the plastic MacBook, did not have a FireWire port on it, and people freaked. I was one of the people who freaked. I remember I was writing for for TUAW at the time, RIP, and I was I was like, this is insane. And within a year, within probably like six months, actually, they re-released that laptop, renamed it the 13-inch the MacBook Pro, Unibody MacBook Pro, and put a FireWire port on it. But that's the only time I can ever recall in like recent Apple history of them going back on something. When Tim Cook that's did that uh, really good Washington Post interview, he did admit to having made mistakes. He said the Apple yeah. Maps fiasco. For instance, sure. we, we made a mistake there. They didn't recall it or anything, but they worked very hard to make it up, make it work better. Someone uh, in the chat said... There's no said, new Coke moment for Apple. Someone in the chat said, we will never have a pencil. <laughs> stylus. Oh, if you see a stylus, you do it. No, but... But, but, but that, that's but, Jobs but, not being around. And it, it was Jobs talking about a phone, not a tablet. Right. Totally. And, 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 and the Apple Pencil is different, definitively different than the typical source of stylus that you were seeing at the time. Like it, it's a, it is, it is different. It's, it's a, it's a sort of device that, that even other styluses that we were seeing for, you know, like, like iPads and stuff like that. It's, it's a different sort of, it's a different sort of tool. Um, but yeah, and it's not the primary input mechanism. Like it's, you can still touch as your primary input mechanism. If you're going to use the Apple Pencil, that's because you need precision for certain stuff. It's, it's not as if it's not like a, a Palm Trio, which is you know who had a stylus. That's who he was referencing, or the Windows Mobile devices, which use styli, where you had to touch their terrible non-capacitive touch screens, you know, to to, to get stuff done. And it, it sure was fun to play like Bubble Bobble, but it was a, a terrible user experience oh yeah i had uh what was that it was a palm device um that had a stylus on it and i played a lot of bedazzled on it actually I that, that's what it was Bejeweled. Bejeweled. Yeah, that's what I was, it was saying. Bejeweled. oh bejeweled was great on and the it, trio what was that was uh was the um oh it was uh the clio remember the clio was clio. a sony yeah, it was a sony clio. palm sony. device yes it's it was an awesome device, device except that uh, I lent it to somebody. I got it back, and she'd apparently played a lot of Bejeweled because there was a scratched, like, grid <laughs> wow. on the phone. She'd played it so much with the stylus that oh, man. <laughs> it was like there was a grid of her going because Bejeweled, you slide, and mm -hmm. wow. Uh, so okay. That's aggressive. That's, that's an aggressive Bejeweled player. Serious business. Mm -hmm. that, never say never. Uh, I don't think the modern Apple, I don't think Tim Cook is so adamant that he'd say we will never surrender never give up forward only if they made a horrible mistake with the uh headphone jack i could see him backing down no I, we no we all can't even think about it like it's not even like something you can it's envision not even possible we all, we all just not. sat here with our eyes going like this like not even possible <laughs> No, I, th I think what's a lot more likely, and 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 I, I think is that Apple does this, and then you see how many other companies. I mean, look, as you said, they're not the first company to not have the headphone jack. Everybody will um, copy it. Absolutely, but that's what I'm saying. Like that, that, that's the thing. Slave sheeples that will just go whatever you say, Apple. Lemmings off the cliff, and it will be a mistake in every respect, in my opinion. But I've been wrong many. I've been wrong more often than not with Apple. So. I will never be able to talk to anyone again if I have to like charge headphones to make that happen. <sighs> but don't worry, they'll give you a dongle that'll last for like two months. So for uh, two months, two months you'll be have, able to talk to people. I have dongle fatigue. They're gonna so have to many. tell a really compelling story because really the the most obvious story is well we just want to make more money on headphones uh, right. by licensing the uh, the uh, lightning port. Sorry, but that's you know we're in it for the money. And or unless you're able to make an apple that anybody wants to see. No. It's compelling if you think about you're carrying your phone and it becomes the basis of you have to keep it with you all the time and talk to it. If Siri becomes better, you're just going to want to have something that's a lot lighter weight that you don't have to worry about like making a gesture and whacking out your headphones. I mean like so if if you envision that becoming <laughs> You mean when I throw my phone cuz Siri's such an idiot? Uh, Yes, but think about taking it also into your Siri's, car. Siri is never going to get better, by the way. I can promise you Siri is never going to get better. 
Maybe they can use Alexa voice services. Oh. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Apple's been lapped twice now on voice recognition. I'm sorry. I really like Siri on the Apple TV. I'm going to disagree with you a little bit there. I, I have issues with it on the phone. Yeah, because it's find such a constrained thing. thing you're doing. Right. But on the Apple TV, it works really well. Yeah, because all you're doing is saying, show me Mannix reruns. It's easy. Or fair. It's but or it still works really well. I'm sorry, Gilmore Girls. Did I say Mannix? I you did say Mannix, but... Well, I watch Gilmore Girls, I but know. yeah, totally. Right? <laughs> I, could, I could speak to my Amazon really well, too, for TV. Yeah. I mean, TV's I say easy. Batman, and Batman just pops yeah, up TV's like nobody's easy. business. But uh, Even Comcast has TV. Yeah. I mean, exactly. On, and that's saying something. Even Com That's the end of the conversation. Even Comcast <laughs> has voice-activated TV remotes Hey, speaking now. of TV, there's We're a done. really interesting story. Peter Kafka writing in Recode uh, from Walt Mossberg. Uh, remember that we, in the Walter Isaacson biography of Steve Jobs, Isaacson said, Steve told him on his deathbed practically, uh, we've, we've, we've licked it, I think he said. He said, TV we is... We finally cracked it. We finally cracked it. Uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, and uh, then we never heard anything, and there was a lot of rumors from people that Apple was going to do a TV set. Well, finally, Walt Mossberg was sitting on this all along. He says, St Steve Jobs called him on the night... That he, that he formally handed over control to Tim Cook and told him, I think we figured out a way to do it, TV, and it's going to be fantastic. And he said, Walt, I want you to come over and see what we're working on. But he died two months later. And no one, and Walt never made it over. And no one really knows what it was. It's it, the mystery uh, passed with Steve Jobs. So... That was, okay, Jobs died in, was it 2011? Yes. Yes. So that was a very different time for TV. And mm -hmm. I, I really want to emphasize that something you were planning way back then, even being Steve Jobs, I don't know if it would have a lot of relevance today. So maybe that's why we've never seen anything from it. I'm yeah. also, I'm the cynic in me, and you're going to hate me, here, but I, it's okay. The cynic in me uh, says that, Jobs played Walt Mossberg like a fiddle and mm -hmm. used Walt to basically get the Wall Street Journal, which he was writing for at the time, to tell the Apple story. And it, Mossberg even says S Steve wanted to clearly communicate that even though he wasn't going to be CEO anymore, he this is the quote, he was going to still be involved their press release made some vague nod toward that, but he wanted me to know that he was going to be involved in big strategic things and also that he was going to reserve one particular thing for himself. I said, well, well what's that? Steve said, well, it's television. I think we figured out a way to do it, and it's going to be fantastic. I want you to come out in a few months, and I want to show it to you. That conversation I don't think necessarily means that there really was anything significant, it could just as well have been Steve playing Walt one more time saying, hey, just remember, I'm still around. I'm not, I don't want you to think I've left Apple. Can I ask you a question? He was, by the way, at that point, very sick and very Can I, can I ask you a question? Sick. Yeah. Now, Steve Jobs, great man. Was he out here making everything on his own? No. Was he literally designing no. things? He didn't he have, have a lab, lab in the Palo Alto house. He had a lab when he was working by himself. He was soldering together the, the perfect TV. <laughs> so, so even if he passed away, the team that was doing everything that he ordained them to do is still in existence unless they had like a trap bomb connected to his heart and they <laughs> expired when he died. So if there was something magical to be happened, the magic would have been released. It would have been the Steve Jobs is the that, greatest thing in the world and now he's passed and here is the greatest thing Steve Jobs ever did. It's so also don't tell me, this is like clickbait. This is a clickbait story. Yeah. It sounds nice, but don't well, tell me that he told you that there was a magical wand and somehow this magical wand but has disappeared be. to the ether. Here's the other, the less cynical interpretation, which is that he did have engineers working on something very exciting yeah. and Apple decided after looking at it, well, it's not that exciting or it's not a business for us. There's a lot of reasons. Apple does a lot of well, things. I don't think they're going to do a car, even though they spent so much money on it. I think, I they're, think gonna, they're going to do a car. I think they're going to back they're gonna down do on it. I think they're going to do, 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 do a car, but I think to Stacey's point, I think that the TV industry has changed so much. And I think the set-top box is one thing that makes a lot of sense because... Well, there's a the new opportunity now, right? The FCC is going to open that up. 
Right. Well, but yeah, the FCC, but also, you know, the whole the whole rise of cord cutting and skinny right. bundles and, and that sort of thing. And I think with the TV, I mean, as, as, as a lot of people have seen, I mean, it's become so commoditized, even going into 4K, it's become so commoditized right. that I don't know if that would be, if it would, it would make sense for Apple to be in that space because Apple loves their margins, right? So if they're going to have a TV that also has this built-in set of box component and is, they're going to want to sell for their price, I think they've got to realize that in 2016 or, or even 20, you you know, 13, even even 2011, it would have been harder to make the argument. It's it's going to be difficult to say people are going to buy you an Apple branded television set. But, you know, a, a set top box is a little different. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm with a doctor. I totally think they're building a car. Stacey, I think what's the, the status of that FCC ruling? They're still taking comments yeah. on that? They are st I believe they are still taking comments. They may be in the second round of comments. And some, some courts, I think, have said this, you couldn't do that if you wanted to, but... Of course, the cable company hates it. They say, "Cable company hates it. it." This is how we. This is our value add. You take away our set top box. There's. But <laughs> man, if you can put bike. the internet around television content oh, and access yeah. on your TV, think about the application. I mean, like that is such. It's the biggest screen in your house. I get so excited thinking about it. Oh, I agree. So, if Comcast totally, X One is the state of the art, that the best thing the cable companies can come up with, they haven't tried. They have not tried. That is crap. They're, they're always behind the ball on everything. I'd like to ask you one general question. Um, do you have $20 on you, Uncle Leo? I do. I bet you $20 that after you do this next ad read that you can't go two stories without saying the word Apple. I'll give you a Note 7. If uh, I I'll, t I'll take the Note 7. <laughs> He's going to take it. Ad read. Two stories with the word Apple. All right, you guys, you're the witnesses. All right. Let's do it. We got a great, by the way, we got a great studio, a giant studio audience today. It verifies that I thought we'd be able to get a lot of people in our new test studios, East Side Studios. And yeah, we've got about 20 people here today, and it's wonderful to have you all. I guess it's Labor Day weekend, so uh, people got nothing better to do. And uh, including a, a, a guy up front who's wearing a Morse code, a t shirt in Morse code. The dots are marshmallows. The dashes are graham crackers and chocolate, and it says in Morse code, I love s'mores. It is the bizarrest <laughs> mashup uh, ever, but he's a ham, so it's okay. Anyway, it's great to have you all. Thank you for coming. If you want to be in our studio audience, we love having you here. Um, and the new studio is uh, is made for uh, for visitors. Just to email us at tickets at twit.tv. We did have somebody yesterday who came late, and he said, I went to the old studio. And uh, so I guess he Googled it or something, and it takes a while for Google to update. But I th we, the wiki's right, and the email you'll get back from us is right, and we'll give you directions uh, to the new place. We also are celebrating the opening of Tess, the East Side Studio, with some um, new uh, merchandise. We got some merch, uh, custom T-shirts, mugs, hoodies, stickers with the East Side logo. Anthony Nielsen uh, in our, uh, uh, our marketing department did such a great job with this. If you go to Teespring, T -E -E -S -P -R -I -N -G, T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G, teespring.com slash twit, uh, you will be able to uh, pick the merchandise of your choice. The only thing to remember is that these are limited time. We only do this for 30 days, so there's only three weeks left. Uh, men's, women's, on the front, the twit logo, on the back, the uh, really, I think, really tasteful Eastside Studio logo. Uh, so... You know, if you and some people I know have the brick house tees that we made, so this you've got to have a complete set. Here's the hoodie, which I think is really nice, it's a pullover a hoodie, and then there's a mug as well, uh, and stickers, which are cheap. I hope they should be stickers, shouldn't be on anything, right? Uh, four dollars for the sticker, <laughs> okay? So teespring.com slash twitter our show today brought to you by carbonite online backup i had a guy call a radio show today he said please don't be mad at me i'm i'm so embarrassed i have never backed up in my life he said i've been yeah. using computers for 12 years and i've never backed up and i thought well you know what don't be embarrassed you're a lucky son of a gun because data loss happens and of course it happens at the worst possible time that's why a good backup solution is so important Important enough in your home, you know, if you've got baby pictures or wedding pictures or financial records or emails, there's got to be stuff on your computer you just do not want to lose. But imagine if you're a business and the computers in your business, they've got your accounts receivables. 
They've got your suppliers list. They've got your customers list. Those computers hold the keys to your business. If your business, if that building burns down, you can, you know, you got insurance. You can replace all that stuff. Do you have insurance for your data? I bet not. No point in buying insurance for your data after the fire. You get it before the fire, you get Carbonite right now. Automatic cloud backup. They've got great solutions for business, including appliances. They recently acquired a company called Evolt. They make a really great solution. If you're an IT pro, you certainly know the name. Uh, these guys are great. And you know, one thing that should terrify every business is ransomware. 90% of all the phishing attacks out there now contain ransomware viruses. That's the virus that when it activates on your computer, encrypts your data and then asks for a ransom. Just send us 300 bucks, we'll unencrypt it. First of all, even if you send them 300 bucks, chances are you're not going to get a decryption. But if you've got Carbonite, you've got nothing to worry about because Carbonite does something every backup should do, but most do not. It's called versioning. It doesn't just save the most recent version, which might well be the uh, the version that's encrypted, it, sa it saves previous versions. So you can always go back to that unencrypted version and say, nah, 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 to the bad guy. Carbonite is kryptonite for ransomware. Try it out for free. You don't need a credit card. That means there's no way they're going to, you know, like say, oh, we're just going to auto-renew you. No, they really want you to try it free at carbonite.com. But when you do try it, where you see the offer code, put in TWIT. And the only reason I say that, well, two reasons. One, so they know you saw it here, but also so you'll get two months free when you buy. As little as $5 a month to back up everything on a Mac or a PC, but they've got plans for servers, networks, and more. Carbonite.com. I'm on a kind of a mission to get everybody using Carbonite. Well, let me, let me help you out with that mission, Uncle Leo. Please do. So long story short, I will not have anybody feel sorry for me, but... The power went out and my security system was down and someone broke into my home. They stole all three of my laptops. Oh, um, dear. They stole the iPads. They stole my PlayStation. And literally, like, you know, I'm a Oy. chill dude. The thing that made me the most upset was thinking the pictures of my daughter are gone. Where's my stuff? Yeah. And um, luckily, you know, most of my hard drives are still here and I still have stuff, but I have everything backed up. So if you don't have stuff backed up, whether it be a fire or a flood Bad or somebody just coming in and taking it, yeah. you know, th that 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 laptop, whatever, is f the value of it, $3,000 you get back from insurance, that's cool. You can't get back the pictures of your newborn, your grandfather, your your mother, your, your kids first walking on the video. So everybody should be backing up everything. And five bucks to get you in the door is... Not that much. Well, it's when it part comes of a larger strategy. I think it's good to have what you had—the backup hard drives. You're lucky they didn't steal those. That's the but problem. Yeah, you still got to back up to the cloud. Local backup. But you, have to have all, you have to have the offsite yeah. backup. You got to have it. Thank you. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Fine. Everything's there. Yeah. Did your insurance cover it? Uh, they you know, they're insurance, so I got to wait a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you. I know. We talked about this on the podcast. You lost your camera yeah. equipment too. Yeah, that's Maybe. what I was. Yeah, people in the chat were like, "Why aren't you in HD?" And I'm like, "Yeah, well, you know, they stole you." Wait a minute. That is low. They oh, yeah. stole. <laughs> he stole your webcam. Do you not? Do you not. It wasn't my webcam. I was using my Canon seventy uh, D. Oh. And, and, you know, the crazy part about it is, there's like a fifteen hundred dollar lens on it. The lens is more than the camera's worth. But the thing that cracked me up is like these are really dumb thieves. They took the three hundred dollar mic off of the top of the camera, like unscrewed it, <laughs> took it off. And went down. And the tripod, I have like a five hour tripod. They took the clip off of the tripod, left the <laughs> tripod. So I'm like, why wouldn't you just take everything? It's all worth right, money. Right. Like, just, that's what thieves do. They're not that bright. That's why they're thieves. That's why they're thieves. But anyway, but I'm back sorry. it up. I'm back sorry. it up. Listen, back it up. That sucks, Owen. I'm really sorry. It happens. Yeah. Every time you come on, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> Don't feel sorry for me. Everything's great. I'm over here. I know smiling. you're like the sweetest guy. You're jolly. You're you're happy. Man, you're you're look, smart. And but but worth, bad stuff happens to you. There's there, hey no stuff happens. That's life. That's dude. life, isn't it? That's life. Yeah. Things happen. You know. You sometimes you drop a glass and break it. Sometimes it lands in this hole and you're happy. And that's how <laughs> Wait a the world works. You have a hole for your glass. Not like a glass. Like when you drop a wine glass, it's the floor, it's and you think you're the luckiest person in the world. Like, yeah. oh my God, it didn't break. When the toast lands butter break. side up, I'm a happy man. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Two stories, no using the word about fruit. I Let's got go. it. Google, according to Android Police, is going to have an event October 4th. And that's when we're going to hear about the new, uh, well, I want to call them Nexus phones, the Google branded phones. But uh, the rumor, David Ruddock writing for Android Police, is it will be called a Pixel. 
The Pixel and the Pixel XL. I cannot believe you're leading with the phones and not Google Home. I I'm know. so sad. Oh, you're right. You're right. The Google. Well, so, okay. I need a phone because apparently my Nexus bursts. Oh, that's true. By, I mean, my but you're not going to wait till October 4th for that. No, I have other phones lying around. But uh, is that, oh, doctor, did, he, did, he, did he, the thieves steal his internet too? <laughs> oh, my God. Talk about bad things happening. We'll get him back on. So, uh, actually, yeah, it is more than the phones. Uh, we'll start with the phones because uh, people are very interested in these phones. I, I personally think if you're going to get Android, I wish the Google hardware were a little, a little bit higher and a little bit better cameras, a little bit better battery life because you really do want Android from the home office. Right, Google, yeah. I will not go back to, like, alternatives. They just not, you know, like the... The, the Note 7 has a much nicer screen, has a much better camera. I just... I wish they still did the Google Pure. The GPE, yeah, yeah, the Google Pure yeah, edition. The, yeah, the, the, those were great because then you got the best of, like, the hardware you really wanted, but the software, you know, that... These will be Google. designed by HTC, which makes very nice phones, but, you know, they're going to be eh. just a notch below, I think, the top of... Do they, though? Does HTC make really nice phones? Okay, maybe not. I don't, I don't I mean, think I'm they do I'm just being anymore. honest. I don't think they do anymore. I'm, I, I, hate, I hate to be that person, oh, but I really don't think the they HTC do. The HTC 10 was pretty good. How many years ago was that? Uh, no, it was, this year. it was a few months ago. Christina, how quickly you oh, move the, on. Oh, the HTC 10. The, the 10, HTC 10, not 10 was the one. Fine. I was... The HTC oh, the one. 10. Cause I, cause I, no, because I was thinking the, the A9. The or the A9. No, I was thinking yeah. the A9, which now they're doing the... the, the now, I crack. had the HTC 10, yeah. and I admit I gave it to Tony Wang, one of our editors. He loves it, though. He says it's an extremely good camera. Um, it was a pretty nice phone. It wasn't, like, the best ever, but it was pretty good. Uh, it's just going to be, you're right. It's, it's like <laughs> third tier or fourth it's, tier. It's like, exactly. again, it's a good phone. Yeah. It's not a Kaluka Kalaki or whatever you get when you go to the I need a like, Kaluka Kalaki. Where can phones. I get one of them? What, what, you know what I'm talking about. Go down to a Metro and, and go pick up one of those phones for $75. <laughs> the it's click like you, click TCL. Yeah, or a yeah, blue, one like, of the blues. Yeah. The blue, H yeah, the HTC blue. is like the step above that. Like that's their oh, Lexus that's right sad. there before you even right. get to like the regular sad. market of phones. And look at what Lenovo's done to Moto, which used to be a great brand, is now just also <laughs> another. Although I like the magnetic backs. That's interesting. I don't know. I should just no. get an iPhone. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Why, oh, that's not oh my god! I didn't say anything about Apple. Oh, I just I think that, that was just a just side did. comment. Chat room. I think somebody sent me an exploding uh, Samsung Seven. I I don't know. I, I think that qualifies. You don't I want that, that phone. Just I my sure luck. Do. Your house would burn down and be my fault. <sighs> that's fair. That's I guess fair. that's fair. I don't, I don't Return want to get me a new one. The deal's a deal. What do you? you can't I'll get you now. something. <laughs> Send you. A fl we sent your daughter candy. You sure did, and she loved I it. I like a lot of candy. She loved it. I thought, it. Lisa, is that really the best thing to send an eight-year-old is a bunch of candy? Yes. Yes, yes. It was. they will love you forever. Yes, it was. So what was She it? made was an like... unboxing video for it, too. I know. Yeah, it's an oh. unboxing video up there somewhere. If you look up Leah's Sugar Wish on YouTube, <laughs> you can go see her enjoying all this candy. She even shared it with her friends. She's such a good kid. She wouldn't oh. share it with me. <laughs> But she shared with her friends. So this That's is good. actually, Stacy. We'll do this for your daughter. It's kind of, I mean, I think it's mean, but you, it's no, a. Don't it's send a, my daughter candy. Yeah, right. It's mean. No, um, she's a hoarder. She she won't. Um, you she, won't get any. She only eats one a day, and then she keeps it for the rest. Oh, she of, would love this. Oh, so Sugar Wish forever. is this site that you you go there. We, we give you a certificate, and then you pick your candy. So oh, now my husband would go for that. Yeah. So they <laughs> they have just all kinds of weird candy. And you just pick it, and then they send you a box. So it's like a candy gift certificate. It's the worst. That's amazing. <laughs> it's, That's awesome. And they have old-fashioned stuff, too. You know, they have, like, the old-fashioned candies. Well, she's not here, but I actually, um, I you stole her. You saved, you stole her sugar, wish. <laughs> she's still got, like, she's still got oh, peach look at, She's left. a hoarder, too. What'd she yeah, get? Well, she's, eat, she's eating them one at a time. And these are for us. These are the last ones we're gonna have. These are mini gumballs, oh, but and these man. and these are strawberry uh, March man. Look, give me. What's a, wrong with spot. kids today? No, I'm not, I don't understand. I'm not to, they have impulse control. The, What's wrong with them? She eats one at a time. She eats like one candy complete at a time. So I'm not allowed to go in it without her. We gotta. You, you gotta guys, talk about it. You guys should make friends. <laughs> so <laughs> all right. Kids. So forget the phone. They also supposedly are gonna announce a 4K Chromecast. That's pretty awesome, right? That's. Does anyone? 
Huh? Oh, go on. Go on, Christina. I was just going to say, that's weird to me. Like, <sighs> Why is that weird? I got a 4K TV. I can't see as anything. Do I, as do I. And there's not a lot of 4K content no. is what my point is. Yeah. So uh, do you have 4K there will be. Netflix? I do. And it's, it's, I have 4K Netflix and I have uh, 4K Amazon. Does it but feel it like 4K? You end up watching no. stupid shows that you would never watch just because they're see, made in 4K. And that's exactly my point. I keep asking people, people say, oh, I'm watching 4K on my Netflix. I'm like, what are you watching that's meaningfully 4K Marco on Netflix? Polo. Does it feel it's like the 4K? worst show. Marco Polo, no, terrible because, show. Because, because the, the late, I mean, even though I have very fast internet, you know, it's still the bit rate that whatever Netflix is putting out. So if I had a 4K Blu-ray player, then that would probably be better. But I don't. I, can, I so have that new. I can uh, kiss you right now. That's exactly <laughs> the answer why. Uh, what is your speed that you think that you're really pulling down this 4K that you're supposed to be getting it on your TV streaming? You're not. You're just paying extra for no reason. I have. Uh... I have uh, 4K uh, HDR, which is the new thing. And I got the Sony, nice. I mean, the uh, Xbox One S, which has that new kind of Blu-ray player. Right. Um, but on Netflix, by the way, this little tip, you can search for 4K or search for HDR and you'll get all the Netflix content that's in 4K or 4K HDR. One of them is Marco Polo, which is the just dumb, stupid show about Marco Polo. But the sad thing is... When you see it in 4K and HDR, it doesn't look like this. I'm showing a little video clip of it. It looks like you're watching some actors in a set in a room. It looks real. It looks like you're there. It, lo it loses all of its magic. It's like, oh, that's some guy dressed as Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like Joe the Plumber dressed as Genghis Khan, and you're watching this. There's no magic at all. I don't even know if I can believe you because you don't like the show and that just sounds You silly. like Marco Polo? I like history. So I love history. I That's do, why I don't like I do like, like Marco, Marco Polo. Polo. I mean, I enjoy it. There's I, a whole I'm not watching now. on 4K, so I haven't lost the magic apparently. <laughs> so maybe that's why I still enjoy it. Yeah. But All right, I mean, so 4K it, Chromecast, we don't care a whole lot about. All right, finally, Stacy gets her wish. Yes. Google Home. Google Home. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the home is the the like the Echo competitor, right? It is. It is. Yes, yeah. totally the Echo competitor. The big difference in Google Home there looks to be two, multicasting, so you can listen to things in multiple Google Homes. And then the other thing that I'm excited about is the potential for notifications, which they showed in their video. Uh, so not only can you talk to it, it'll talk to you too, like proactively. What? what? Yeah. Do you want somebody in your house talking to you? Already Echo does, and it's annoying. I'm watching TV. She says, I'm sorry. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> it's really annoying. It's, they showed it They showed it going bing, and then you're like, okay. I'm you listening. Say, what is it? Yeah. Yes, sir. I think it was, yes, whatever it is. And, and then, it looks like an air freshener, so that's there's it's got that going for there it. There is that. Um, I'm, I'm super excited. I want to know when I can buy it, when I can play with it. And how much better or worse. Although with the Sonos news with Amazon, now I'm kind of yeah. like, the that's home a big deal. That's yes, a really huge. big deal. Huge. That's a really I big deal. I was so deal. excited. I think only we care about it because Sonos is really one of those things, much like the Amazon Echo, that okay. is that is like if you're the handful of people that own it, you can't stop talking about it. So let me correct and you. And everybody I else goes, two, oh, God. I know two people in the real world that aren't tech people don't really care about much, but they use Sonos. Oh, I love that. And Sonos. both of them. I'm not saying. And so, if you once you can automate it like that, oh, people amazing. already have that system. So it's exactly. kind of it's a big deal for regular people too. To yeah, my, my involve parents them have a and Sonos. bring them in. All right. My parents have a Sonos, and they're not. I wouldn't call them tech people. I also okay. got my mom and an okay. Echo for uh, for Mother's Day, and she loves it. But and they, so the fact you, that you want them to talk, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now they will, which yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. In 2017, they will. Next year. Yeah, in January. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, guess what? The, the, the We're in September 2017, although that sounds like the future, is practically here. I know. Well, Have you made your CES reservations? Oh, my God! No! <laughs> no, I was at the Sonos event this week, and uh, they were saying, you know, that the, the beta will be, out, will be out later this fall, and it'll be, like, early 2017, so... It's Wait, exciting. the beta's for Spotify, though, right? Yeah. The beta so they're going to play this, things on the, Spotify? Yeah, but they also said there was going to be a beta for the uh, app. Yeah, they have the to test it. That makes sense. I am Did so they tell you, because we were wondering this, Stacey, Stacey and I and uh, Jeff were wondering this on Twig. 
uh, if it would allow. So with one of the things that's great about Sonos is you attach it to all your accounts, not just Spotify, right. but Deezer and Pandora and even Apple Music. And then you can say uh, to well, you can't say, but you could say on the app, you can in effect say right. uh, you, choose you, something you can, from Apple Music, play an Apple Music right. playlist. Will do you think? And 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 Stacey's of the pin this will not be available. That you would be able to say to your Echo, play Apple my Apple Music playlist on my Sonos in the living room. I wouldn't imagine why it wouldn't work because you're basically, you know, controlling the Sonos app, the Sonos experience. I mean, I think that they're building the two things in together. I wouldn't imagine why that wouldn't work. Um, that's, so that's are you controlling the app or the speakers? That's the question. And that's not clear. So yeah, that's a good point, and that that would be the differentiator. If, if, the, if you're controlling, if you're controlling the app, then then there'd be no reason you couldn't. Yes. But if you're controlling the speaker, then that that becomes a little bit different. Then you're probably limited to whatever Amazon is doing. Although again, you know, Amazon at this point it doesn't have all the services that that you can do um, with with a Sonos. Sonos supports more services, but it is increasingly doing more and more of them. And for instance, if you've got an iPhone, you can't control your Apple Music or, or your iTunes or whatever you know, from that app experience, it'll play it from your phone and, and send it to um, to your Echo. So I don't know. that that That's a really good question. I don't know. They were kind of light on details, which was disappointing. Um, I was very excited, though, just to see the integration all the way around. So the Home, the Google's device, which really seem, and I have to say, if they put, you know, whatever, what do we call OK Google? What do we call that? What is that? Uh, Google, is, Google, it's not Google Assistant. Assistant. Is okay. it is that really Google Assistant? That's what they're gonna, yeah, that's what they're going to that they're rebranding that. Oh, and that's going to be an Allo, the new uh, messaging app as well. Yeah. And if they have that that would be a reason to buy Home oh, over the yeah. Echo because it's like smart. oh my my Echo still thinks we after Gene Wilder died this is I don't know why I'm so emphatic about this but it still thinks that he died at the age of 81 when he died at the age of 80 Three, and I'm guessing it's just a function of Bing. But like, there's like little things yeah. like that where you're like, oh, come on, Echo. Echo uses that, Bing. That can mess somebody up on their school project because you know these kids Bing. are out here being lazy. Video? Oh, yeah. They're, they're, not not checking, they're not actually checking the real dates on things. They're checking with Echo. And Echo could be off by two or three years. I think Echo you know, should use War of 1776 Jeeves. happened in 1778. <laughs> That's a big difference. Somebody gets F for that. Uh, okay. Okay. So that's an interesting point that Echo uses Bing. Yeah, I think they use Bing. They use Wikipedia. They might use Wolfram Alpha. I don't know who they use. But yeah, but but yeah, but great, great point, Stacey. Because yeah, Google is going to be more accurate on that stuff. Oh, Google's sure. be awesome. And the notifications will basically be Google Now. Oh, right. That's mm -hmm. my happy Google Now noise. That's what I'm guessing. I mean, we don't know anything about it because so when we asked about it when it, they showed it, it off, it might like, say, "Hi, Leo. It's time to leave for work. If you want to make it." I don't think that's the voice Google's going to use. <laughs> <laughs> Can they use Maybe. Scarlett Johansson for me? I don't care what you get, but I want Scarlett Johansson. Sean Connery. It's time to leave for work, Stacey. <laughs> Why, you're <laughs> looking marvelous today. With my luck, I'd get my mom. Stacy. <laughs> Stacy, time to leave for work. Get up. Wake up. That'll, that'll get you moving. That'll get you out of the house pretty quick. Yeah. True. Uh, we don't know what voice. That's an interesting point. Well, they'll probably just use the Google vo assistant voice, right? That's a, a terrible that's a lady. voice. It isn't a great voice, but Siri's not a great voice either. We could do better of, with our voices. voices. We need better voices. There's a company called Josh.ai that has, they've shown it off. I don't know if it's out yet or if it's coming out momentarily, but they've got different voices for the Echo that. Oh. So you can get different accents, different sexes. How different. open is the Echo? It's pretty open, right? You could put it, it on is, a Raspberry yeah. Pi. So things like having a new voice, you could theoretically, would they have to make a deal with Amazon to make it a task? I don't know how they're going to do it. I, I think it's a skill. Sorry, a skill, not a task, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who would be the greatest voice of all time to be on any machine? Patrick Stewart. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, make, that'd be make, good one. make it so, Christina. I'll take that. Uh, Morgan Freeman? Nobody yeah, can Morgan afford Freeman. Him. Nobody, nobody can afford him. He'd be amazing. He I'm trying to think of to women who I'd want. Can't think of any. <laughs> but they use well, female voices, I think, because I've always seen this said that fighter pilots, when they're passing out because they're stalled or whatever, they use female voices for the fighter pilots. Pull up, pull up, because we all have mommies and we're trained to listen to female voices. Okay, that is just silly. 
<laughs> I want to see the study for that. That is ridiculous. Really? I think that's true. <laughs> uh, again, everybody. Yes, everyone has a mother. You yes, are correct. Even everyone even women have mother. mothers. I'm just saying that sounds that just sounds so silly. It really does. I mean, you think a male voice. Like, why do they use? Well, okay, so here's the thing about that. It's universally female voice for things. So if there's a woman. Like, I, I would almost believe, like, hey, men are more inspired to not punk out when a woman's around. Like, oh, you're blacking out. If a female says get up, you're going to do it because you don't want to embarrass yourself. Over, everyone has a mom, and your mom tells you get up, and you think you're going to get up for your mom. You know what they call that voice, by the way, what fighter pilots call that voice? Bitch and Betty. Awesome. See? Bitch and Betty. Wow. Um, it's a slang term used by or pilots. Or nagging Nora. Look at that. Or nagging yeah. Nora. Yeah. Wow. Or. Hank Your the door Yank. is a jar. Your door is Your a door. jar. I hate that. The door is a jar. I hate that. <laughs> um, but you don't, they're not trying in that case, uh, of course, you're not trying to uh, soothe somebody. You're trying to get them to pay attention. Yeah. Early human factors research in aircraft and other domains indicated, this is Wikipedia, so you know it's true, that female <laughs> voices were more authoritative to male pilots and crew members and were more likely to get their attention. Much, now it says citation needed. Citation so, needed. Citation needed. Somebody <laughs> just made that up. Maybe maybe even Leo put that in there. Much of this research was based on pilot experience, particularly in combat situations where the pilots were guided by female aircraft controllers. Okay, citation so just... needed. They reported being able to most easily pick out the female voice from among the flurry of radio chatter. Citation needed. That's because there were no women pilots. Of course you're yeah, going to get into it. Yes, that, there's a that, lot here that I can point out. Is like, yeah, yeah. And that's that, and that's another logic in the time period back in the day when they had this study. That makes a lot more sense too. Oh, you're going to listen to the female on the phone because there are supposed to be females on the phone. Right. What is and she they, doing? And here? by the way, if we then go to right. actual studies, uh, a study at Plymouth University in 2003, and the Defense Research and Development Canada in Toronto in 2009, in both cases, uh, a male voice rather than a female voice in a monotone or urgent enunciation style resulted in the largest proportion of correct fastest identification over time. So never mind, I forget that. The, there is no citation needed here. There's an actual... Oh, oh, actual citation. Effects of talker sex and voice style of verbal cockpit warming, warnings on performances. From Human Factors, Volume 51, November 1st, 2009. I, all right, so it's not true. Now we have to change the whole system. Around. I know now we got to we got to change Wikipedia. I, we need more men and stuff because men are just as annoying as women are apparently in life. I don't know why they think that they need to nag. Do you want to meet bitch and Betty? <laughs> this is bitch and Betty. Wow. Yeah, she's young and attractive. But why don't I hear her though? Do you have my audio? <laughs> we don't have your audio. How old is she? Like, wh she can't be bitch and Betty unless this no. was shot in 1938. Exactly. Well, they, I don't know if they had cockpits to talk to you in 1938, but there's got to be somebody older than her that was doing that before her. This is probably another citation needed. Yeah, we can't trust this. From YouTube this time. All right, All right we need another story. We can't audio? trust Why don't you hear sources. my audio? We are false Have reporting. You figured that out? <laughs> I really want to hear this woman's voice. I want to know if her voice makes me want to pull up. Oh. The Tesla doesn't have a voice, does it? Yeah, it does. Is it female? Yes, it the is. Tesla has a voice. Yeah, doesn't it? There's, it's a. Oh, I think it's Google's though, because it's yeah. the uh, guidance. Oh, that's a female voice. Yes. Yeah. Google does not get now with Apple. You can change Siri's voice to a male voice by changing yes. the, in, the nationality. Yes. Yes. But you can't with the, Google, right? You you're stuck with that voice. There's no. I have. Yeah, I've never messed around with it but i don't think you can Why i was like not? let us go to the internet <laughs> wasn't the greatest thing about tom tom for instance remember the tom tom gps is, is you could use oh, yeah. celebrity voices oh yes those were great yeah. i loved those it, it's actually it, sad that you don't get to do those anymore i was just talking to somebody about that the other day because they're like man i was listening to mr t i was like you still have a i pity the fool who turns here go and ahead He's like, yeah, he's like, he uses it when he travels and gets a rental car yeah. so he doesn't have to pay for a uh, GPS. Yes. And I'm like, that's really awesome. I miss that stuff. Well, so when you have an infinite variety of things to say, though, you can't yes. hire an actor to. Right. Right. I used to have. Um, now, you can you not get my audio? Do you know what that's all about? Is that me or you or. You can't. Too bad, because I want to play this. 
I used to have a voice. I used to have GLaDOS. Remember GLaDOS, the, the evil robot from Portal? Oh, yeah. I used her on yeah. the TomTom, -tom, and she would tell you to turn left when you're supposed to turn right. Oh. And then and when you would arrive, she'd say, I don't know why you went here. There's no... There, there's no cake here. Oh, my God. It was that's awesome. A that's wasn't a very, troll, but that's fantastic. It was a troll because it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't useful, but. Uh. <laughs> no, it's like the least useful thing in the entire history of the world. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. GPS Hello, is telling you. and welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Navigation System. Aperture Science has committed to the well-being of all users of its navigation systems. Cake and grief counseling will be available at the conclusion of your journey. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then I for after three hundred meters, you have reached your destination. Congratulations! Please remain in your vehicle, and your cake will be delivered shortly. <laughs> it was At fun. I also had Dennis awesome. Hopper for a while giving me directions, kind of stoned <laughs> directions. It was it, that's funny. Why, you see, they're I don't understand why they don't. I guess because it's too much of a vocabulary. Yeah, that's what Stacy was saying, which I think is, makes sense. Yeah. Don't we have systems and algorithms that can just mimic things like that? Once they get yeah. your basic pattern down, can't they just make the inflections? Like they have you say the alphabet, and then you can just say anything. Hello, and Don't welcome have that to technology. Nocturnes. Easy drive again. I'm, I'm exaggerating my point, obviously, but I mean, yeah. the technology. They do, but it's it. expensive. And I think that, that for most companies, I mean, they can do it, but I think. 800 yards. Keep left. Guys, I, I'm going to have to go red, like, then search this. Yeah, would you? Would yeah, because now I'm fascinated. I'm like, oh, you know, the difficulties. I mean, we've been spending so much money on natural language processing and understanding people. What about talking? Communicating. Yeah. What about okay. talking? What about coming back to us? Because wasn't that, I loved the movie Her. Yeah. And the and the thing that made that movie was that Scarlett Johansson was Scar the jo. voice of the AI. And when you have a real, I mean, the, it wouldn't have worked if it didn't have that, I mean, it was, it it's was, this, it's the same way advertising works right now. There's a commercial with uh, Kevin Hart's voice in it and he's uh, doing advertising for a business. And my daughter walks to the room and she stops. And the only reason she stops is because she hears the tone of his voice and she looks mm -hmm. at the TV and she's like, mm -hmm. what is that? And she doesn't care about it, but she cares about his voice. She can feel his voice. So when it's somebody, you know, and somebody you care about or somebody that's soothing, like I said, Morgan Freeman, he could get me to do anything on my phone it's if true. he was talking to me on my phone. Uh -huh. He would be my best friend. Siri's trash. I would use Siri every day just to talk to Morgan Freeman. Like, hmm. literally. Well, so there's an interesting... Or, or James Earl Jones. Yeah. James Earl Jones. CNN. Too. This is oh, the see, world's most a, important. We need to start this home. campaign. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. James Earl Jones, I, I'd, be, I'd feel bad, you know, if I didn't follow his directions. It's he's he's, You're like, oh, he's, sorry. He's on my. I find he's your on my lack of driving. <laughs> <laughs> I am your father. Find the fact that you can't tell your left from your right. Disturbing. Disturbing. <laughs> the, the, the Simpsons uh, had this uh, funny thing when um, I, I guess because he he guest starred a couple of times as uh, as a character, Bleeding Gums Murphy, and at the end of I guess like his character's final appearance, he he made like a lot of the the, the comments like 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 Star Wars and like uh, the Lion King and like CNN like. Bit by bit by bit, it was very funny. But they so do right. use humans to generate these voices. Yeah, they so do. So there must yeah. be a way to give, uh, even though they have to do a lot, you know, sale. By the way, the best of them all is Amazon's Echo. She is really good. She does like have said, a flexion. Yeah. The thing is the price of it, right? So I, yeah, I saw the woman who, who was Siri's voice, and I'm like, they pay her whatever penance in the beginning, and now she's like... Not making money. If you had to get James Earl Jones, the, oh, the you couldn't afford amount that. of dough you'd yeah. have to pay him. No, so oh, you get a voice they? actor. But, but I, I well, do feel like you could have better voices. Yeah, but, but they also have to be understandable and they have to be... Yeah. It's like like the woman, like the woman who did the original, the first Siri voice, and, and and it's a different voice now. But the first Siri, which is why she can now sell herself as like, oh, I was the voice of Siri, is now actually a different voice. She was also, I think, the voice of um the the ATMs, right? That, like Bank of and, America and used to do. I think she was Ma Bell. She did. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, and She's done like a million stores. of those things. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that you have to have like the right celebrity, like a, like a, like a Kevin Hart would be good or a James Earl Jones or, or a Morgan Freeman. But you know, you've got to have something that's easy to understand and is soothing. And that can also be like, that, that can work in a lot of scenarios because you know, if, if it's something that if you have any sort of accent at all or an accent that is, you know, hard to understand, I think that that would, 
end up negating the whole point of, of voice assistant stuff. John Markoff did a great piece earlier this year in the New York Times, creating a computer voice that people like. Uh, and he was uh, talking about uh, Watson. Uh, yeah. And remember uh, that Watson played Jeopardy and had a, a kind of a, a bland voice. He sounded like a jerk. He was a real a-hole. Well, do you want to hear, because this is the best part of this New York Times article. They began in 2009 searching for a voice for Watson. And here are some of the finalists. Do you want to hear some of the finalists that weren't yes, selected? Yes, here's the finalists. This island that was home to a notorious so, prison. Oh, God. That's, no, no, that's Alex Trebek. Oh, okay, so okay, they're okay, going to okay, actually okay, put this in the Jeopardy game. So Trebek is going to ask a question, and you'll hear. Gotcha. This is going to always be the same kind of basic setup. Eight National Recreation Area in San Francisco. What is Alcatraz? Right. A uh, national sites for 2000. So that's pretty good. This state's only national memorial honors clergyman Roger Williams. Jennifer. What is Rhode Island? That's it. So that's pretty close to the final, but here's some other ones that didn't This make island it. that was home to a notorious prison is part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area in San Francisco. What is Alcatraz? Right. A that's national a, that's nice. A female voice, right? That's nice. That sounds a little bit like Siri. Um, this may be not... This island that was home to a notorious prison is part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area in San Francisco. What is Alcatraz? Right. That's a, a little creepier, for right? This yeah. state's only national memorial honors clergyman Roger Williams. Jennifer. What is Rhode Island? That's it. Now, this is the one. I can't even believe they considered this. This is the one. This was the a finalist. Didn't make it. This island that was home to a notorious prison is part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area in San Francisco. What is Alcatraz? Right. Oh. The national sites for 2000. This state's only national memorial honors clergyman Roger Williams. Jennifer. What is Rhode Island? That's it. Go that is creepy. In a that's so creepy. <laughs> that, is that is. I'm picturing like a little mouse. That's, Same. Yeah. I'm like a small child. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't. Because it's, 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 you can disembody it enough. I mean, I, I think you're right, Leo. Like what made her so amazing was that like ScarJo's voice so and she has a great real. voice. Was it feel feel so real? But you also you you either need to have that realness or you need to have the slightly disembodiedness where you're like, oh well, this is uh, you know a nice soothing voice. So there's an uncanny have, valley. Like a, there's an uncanny yes, valley. But, yes. but 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 to have the uncanny valley where then it's like a child voice. You're like, oh my god, a child is inside my 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 machine. Like that's it just sounded creepy. to me more like Chucky, like a killer doll. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That is a yeah, yeah. No, Alex, <laughs> you think you're so smart, Alex? Uh, my, yeah, it, when my daughter was small, I taught her to say red rum. <laughs> so, and it was awesome. Did she do her <laughs> finger? Fantastic. Red rum, red rum, red rum. We did, we that did would creep that. the hell out of me. No, nah, I couldn't do that. that would, I, I'd be like locking my kid in the closet, like, stop it. People come over <laughs> and your daughter comes out and goes, red rum, red rum. I'm going to my room. <laughs> it, was, it was very effective. Yeah. I encourage everyone to do no that. No visitors. Wow. That is really that's awesome. Some people teach your kids to swear. You taught them to look like a psychotic child that's about to, to murder. Terrify people. Terrify which is them. better? It is. Well, they're both great, but yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the red rum. That's fantastic. <laughs> Again, these are all reasons I don't have children because I think that's all I would do. You would do that. If I had yeah. At all. Yeah. That would be all I would do. Do you dress up your cats? I don't know cats? if you can see it, but here's uh, Father of the Year right here. That was Leah today. <laughs> She's going to be Lady Deadpool for Halloween. That's a real sword. That's awesome. That's so and cool. So okay. we just got to get her her blonde uh, little hair tail. I, but but she the, is. here's why you're father of the year. You're planning her Halloween costume in September. Oh, yeah, man. Like, she I got that thing a month ago. I, I had to fight her not to put it on every weekend. She just wants to run around <laughs> in it. Um, I got it because I didn't want it to be sold out by the time Halloween came. Because yeah. as soon as she said, I want to be Deadpool, I'm like, word? Let's do that. Because that is awesome. So is it sexist to have a female voice? Is that... Like, uh, well, you're my servant, kind of like a subservient. I don't think so. No. I think they're more pleasant, to be honest. I also, and maybe this is sexist, I don't want some guy in the house with me. <laughs> I don't mind if there's a guy in the house. I just like the female voice is better. Although I do like the the British Siri male voice. That's what uh, then, Megan that, then that, that. One, yeah. that one actually does feel a little like a servant because yeah. it feels like it's Jeeps. Right, it's like you know, Jeeps. it feels like, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. You feel, you feel like you just got an extra 20K in your bank account when you're using that voice. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I, I got so a little that's bit of what money. Amazon should use. So then you'll be like, oh, yes, buy more stuff. Hey, hey yeah. we got to 
Can we can we talk about an ad and then can we talk about Facebook and some security maybe? Oh, you are all over it. Stephen Fry, um, who has the best British voice right ever, did oh, really? a did a talking clock for a while. It was called the Voco, and he did it. He, he did it as Jeeves. Oh. Good morning, sir. Your horoscope is unusually favorable today. Shall I get your bank manager on the telephone? <laughs> Very good, sir. This is a good way to wake up. <clears throat> good morning, sir. I am delighted you have survived another night. <laughs> if you will allow a personal note, sir, may I add my own small congratulations to the roar of the world's approval? <laughs> oh, I want this clock so bad. This is the Voco. If it didn't have that bird tweet in it, it'd be awesome. Well, that I'm bird is like a sharp sting in my ear. That thing is crazy. It I was a little uh, piercing. Ooh. If not maybe not a good recording. Here, this. But he was funny. That's yeah. a that's that's funny. That's funny clock. Yeah. I love Stephen Fry. Excuse me, madam. The Duke of Wellington presents his compliments through the medium of my Aunt Vera. He is particularly admiring of your shoes. <laughs> I'm afraid I mm. have no further information than that. <laughs> it's very random. You could you could actually create something like that with a pie and just load load vo like yeah, MP3s totally. of Stephen Fry. Totally. Um. Uh that's why I'm just frustrated that they don't do a better job of this. They need to focus more on that, I think. I think they're doing quite enough. I mean, like they've got a they've got the APIs they're working on. They've got They also the probably don't I things. think the Uncanny Valley, they don't want to personify it too much cuz I mean, they're afraid of freaking people out. Yeah, you're not going to get ScarJo talking to you just yet. Yeah, and Skynet no. and the whole thing. And it's Google especially. Anyway, the Google, Google Home Google especially. Yeah. The Google Home, looking forward to it. We'll find out more. Uh, on October 4th. Do you think we'll be able to buy it soon? I hope so. They've got to get that guy out. They announced it at Google yeah. I.O. They announced it in June. Yeah. yeah, but when they announced it, they, it was not well. It was it was so far away that okay. they couldn't even do an onstage demo. It was, it was an empty box. That's true. So I hope that it's available, but it might be one of those things where they actually now give us a demo and then are like, early 2017. Yeah. I don't know. I feel I like they're they're it. still in you like a beta phase. Like they might get it out to certain people to like have it go a couple months with testing before yeah. anybody can even get I a hold want of that. Allo. Like, What's holding Allo up? That's the mess the smart messaging client. That's oh yeah, the, summer's over now too. Yeah, they put out summer is over. Summer is over. Well, it's over in three weeks technically. Technically, so they oh, still yeah, got I time. That, I hate that. Stuff. Yeah, they have until the twenty first. Oh, still got time. I was gonna say yeah. Labor Day technically means the end of summer. Yeah. Notice nobody I know here is does, wearing but, white but, shoes or white belt. Well, I will be wearing white Adidas tomorrow. I mean, you know, that's look, okay. Sneakers, sorry. That's different. No it's white. Still labor. You still got time. Don't say sorry. It's your yeah. right and your privilege. <laughs> you got it until the end of day tomorrow. And sorry, you know what? not sorry. Until midnight. There are still winter whites. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by FreshBooks, the super simple cloud accounting software that changed my life. Like 10 years ago when I was still a freelancer. In fact, Amber MacArthur told me about it uh, because I hated doing invoices. And there's a problem when you're a freelancer. If no one got into, became, you know, nobody started their own business because they love doing invoices so much. I mean, that's, that's like the worst. So it'd come to the end of the month and I put it off. I didn't want to fire up Microsoft Word and Excel and get all my papers and my receipts. And, uh, but the problem is if you don't do that, you don't get paid. And that's a problem. In fact, uh, there was a period uh, when I was doing this, I was going to Canada doing the TV show, that I did not in invoice Rogers for my travel or my time for like four or five months. And then, you know, I'm starting to say, I really need a check. So I put them all together, and they were pissed off. They said, How you're invoicing us for six months worth of travel? We're not going to do it. Amber said, Fresh Books comes out of Toronto. Great company, one of the first Web 2.0 companies, and they've gotten better and better and better. In fact, 5 million small business owners now use FreshBooks for their invoicing, for their accounting. Come tax time, you'll love the reporting. Your accountant will love the reporting. It literally takes 30 seconds to create and send an invoice, including different currencies. I was billing in Canadian dollars, no problem. Uh, you could also brand your invoices with your logo. I had a nice little, you know, Leo logo. You could set recurring invoices so you don't even have to do it every month. Attach receipts. You can use the FreshBooks app to actually take pictures of receipts and get them into the invoice. Clients can pay you online 
which most of the time means you get paid faster because it turns out clients don't like paying any more than you like invoicing. Not because they don't want to pay you. They do. They just It's a pain in the butt. So if they have a button on the email that says, just pay them now, they'll do it. You can even set up auto payment reminders. It's so awesome. They have this new thing. I'm not sure I really understand it, but I think if you are, I would have used this probably then because uh, you can invoice for a payment up front when you're kicking off a project. So a lot of times you go in, to debt basically you go it comes out of your pocket until you uh, get the expenses paid back now you can use freshbooks as a escrow basically uh, you can also import expenses automatically so it's very fast very easy and there's so much more it even has a chip emv chip card so you can you know dip the chip or swipe the stripe that goes onto your smartphone using their app so if you're if you're doing business in people's houses, you can invoice them. You can actually give them an estimate. All this with FreshBooks. Give them an estimate on the app. Give them an invoice on the app, and then take their payment on the app. All at the same, you know, in one day, which is truly amazing. You're gonna love it. It's gonna transform your life if you are invoicing people. Get FreshBooks. You can try it free for 30 days. FreshBooks.com/twit. Freshbooks.com slash twit. There's no offer code for this, but when they do uh, ask you, how did you hear about us? If you would write in this week in tech, I would be eternally grateful. Fresh, but they've been a good sponsor for us since I started using them 10 years ago. Really great company. Freshbooks.com slash twit. What did you want to talk about? Facebook, go oh, doctor? I don't know. Facebook security, something. You want to talk about them, how they can now zoom in on Instagram? <laughs> That's kind of a minor. No, that wasn't it. I, I watch. I watch else, people yeah, though all the time. I'll show them a, an Instagram picture, and they do the. They do this, and but I have know, to, It doesn't do anything, but now it does, right? You can. The worst part is, unless you have a six plus, when you're watching videos and stuff, everybody always tries to turn your phone because the videos right. are so small. Like it, it, it's just a no, natural thing. Like no. anybody who doesn't use Instagram, I'm like, here, watch this video. We're laughing, and they're like, why don't you turn it? Why can't we watch it bigger? And zooming doesn't even help that. I still can't watch the video bigger. You zoom in on a video. What point does that make? We had some pretty mm -hmm. good coverage this week of IFA, and none of you went to Berlin for that, the big IFA no, show. No. Uh, we sent Father Robert Balasser to it. You know, that show was uh, started by, Al well, opened the first show, I think it was 1923, by Albert Einstein. It has been going on since then. It was a radio show originally, IFA. And, oh, yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, I mean, that's so cool. Anyway, uh, and... and uh, Robert was there. He had some picks, some of the things he liked. I don't know if he would buy this, but one of the things he mentioned was Sony's Walkman. Sony's released a new Walkman. <gasps> Whoops. You know how much yeah, the Walkman th is? $3,000. <laughs> yeah. It's gold-plated, but, but it's stupid. But you could also get the $2,300 headphones to go with it. Oh, my God. It's, uh, uh, what is Sony doing? And what well, is Sony doing? It's their 70th they're, they're, anniversary. They're pushing, I, uh, a, they're pushing Apple even into the pocket of not having headphone jacks anymore is what Sony's doing. Wow. If that's oh, the no. price of something. 70 millimeter magnesium dome driver, aluminum coated diaphragm, neodymium magnets, and you're the headband's still, made out of beta titanium. I you're thought still the $800 Walkman was dumb. <laughs> exactly. Oops, my daughter's calling me. I'm sorry you, about you, that. You I, thought, could, I thought the $800 you, you could, Walkman was you dumb. You could sell that if you called it Alf Alpha or Spreckenstein or something. Spreckenstein. But when it says so, something luxurious that people name stupid Sony, things. You, you know, you know, know what's sad? But when you, when you put Sony, Sony on, used I'm like, to be I like won't that. do it. Sony used to be like that. That's what's sad. <laughs> They used to be the quality. Remember the, the they sure. were they were they were the Apple before Apple. Like Steve Jobs, like yeah. wanted wanted Sony to buy Apple back in the eighties. Not anymore, Sony. Wow. When I first had my first Walkman and Discman, I was the coolest kid on the block. I truly understand that. But for Pete's sake, Sony, give it up. All right, here's Let it go. here's one thing I did want to get. I liked a lot the Gear S3 Classic from Samsung, and Huge. I really. Is it really, really big? It's really, really, really big. It's really, really big. Um, but it's so pretty. And by the way, this is not an Android Wear watch. This is Tizen. That's right? Tizen. Yeah. No, I mean it's it's good looking. I suppose I can't I can't look at it and be anything other than angry because I look at a watch like that and 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 Samsung has been like, well, we can't make the female version of this because we just can't make the electronics small enough. And I just get so angry. 
because it looks fine, but it's just like this is a male watch. If you this were is, to wear that watch, you, it'd be you'd be like uh, Grandmaster be Flash. It'd be like you yeah, would, it would be impossible for me to wear the watch. A it would be too heavy. B would be too big. Now I have small wrists anyway. I have like a child size wrist, yeah. and so you the thirty eight millimeter Apple Watch yeah, is too big. like yeah. it's not too big, but I, I have like for the leather band, I have the small size, which right. is like the the size that typically they they're like, oh, we typically sell this to children. I'm like, thanks, thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> but so. so <laughs> That's so insulting. <laughs> um, but but like I, you know, so so, but taking me out of it, I just feel like even the average woman, like so, someone who doesn't have a super small wrist, it's still that watch is still too big for them. And and um, I was talking with someone who like a, a male friend of mine who's like really into to watches, and he was like. Yeah, he's like anything under anything over forty two because I think it's like forty six millimeters or something. He's like anything, you know, over forty two is a big watch. This is so a, a big watch. this is the uh, uh, latest Moto three sixty. It's pretty big. You yeah. would, you couldn't wear that. I think it's forty six. No. Yeah, but it, I like I like big watches. I cannot lie. I mean, it just um, <laughs> I just feel like I don't know because I'm a big guy, right? It doesn't look doesn't look it, sure. It, it looks fine on you. It looks right? fine. It looks manly. Um, that is that is something to, to be said, like how people, again, miss the mark. I understand, like, people not having a female version of a watch all the time. Well, they can't. But if you just... This you, thing has a 380 milli, milliamp hour battery. It's got its four-day battery in it. Again, you can still, still make something stylized exactly. for a smaller wrist or, or female. That's one thing. If you're exactly. like, Apple, who would buy... Because well, women wait, can't okay, walk around no. with this big clunky thing on their hand, and neither can kids. No, 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 no. Because you've got to have... If you're willing to compromise and not put like GPS or a cellular radio on it, this then has, yes. That's what this has a GPS and a phone in it. Right. So if you're going to add the modem for the phone plus the battery, you're going to move into like crazy fat territory. I mean, that's just, that's hard. Uh, but you can, if it's like a normal smartwatch, like just Bluetooth and it's going to use your phone for most of the stuff, totally could do something pretty. It, I was so pissed that, you know, the initial pebble was just, so I, I yeah. took a picture of that. They were like, it's like you're wearing a medical device. And they're, <laughs> the pebble round they're is better great, now. though. If yeah, it's stylish enough, it has to be stylish. It has to look like nice. This is what's been a problem with smart watches is they look totally. stupid. They don't look stylish. If it's stylish enough, some people, not I I admit, Christina, you're not you're not in the picture, but some people would I mean, I think that looks very nice. Of course, the problem yeah. with smart watches, and this is a, an, a, an OLED, AMOLED, super AMOLED screen, and it's a 1.3 inches, is they always look better in pictures because the screen always looks like that's real hands, that's real uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. And then you see it, and it's, oh, it's clearly a, a screen. I don't know. So, I, I'm going to buy this. Somebody sitting on a board on a panel with design and crews and all the smartest people in the world could make a lovely de wearable device for a female, and it just yeah. needs to get done. Like just I, I mean, and again, you don't have to make one with every cycle of watch you make, but make one once a year. Women, Give me an option. I would so I can say buy women are the, are the biggest for market Christmas. for uh, fitness bands and fitness watches. Yes, right? and and I would say that, that women would be more willing to spend a ridiculous amount of money on a watch right. if it's attractive and fashionable. I mean, again, my Apple Watch, I spent two hundred fifty dollars on the band because it's an accessory. It's a fashion thing at that point, not a tech object. And so the way that I mentally am able to justify what I spend on something, at least for me, I can't speak for all women, but at least for me, I'm able to, to sometimes say, well, I'm now justifying this as a fashion purchase versus a tech purchase. And 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 so I can make allowances to spend, you know, $800 on something for my wrist because it's also a fashion item rather than just being like, well, this is a gadget. Couple of things I think you dollars on Oh, sorry. Ahead, Costume jewelry. I'm just thinking about because, like, one of the things I have. No, with but a I'll lot of stuff, watch. I would. Do you do you think your band will work with future iterations of the Apple Watch? I do. Okay, because so that's that's one of my things. Yeah, I'm like, oh, you know, I have I have a Ringley. I I looked at doing the bracelets. I've looked at a lot of stuff because I I love having attractive things that right. interact with my stuff, especially because my phone's always in my bag. Um, but a lot of it's really expensive for something that I'm like, yeah, this is probably going to last. Like, like a smartwatch is a no go for me if it's more than like 200 bucks. Because, my God, it, it's going to get a so, year or two. Apple's yeah, putting it right. one uh, in uh, one Wednesday. We're not supposed to talk about. <laughs> By that, the way, but. that's the other thing. No, we got through two uh, two stories. I'm going to send him a phone anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> we got. Th but the nice. other thing I have to note is that, uh, with the exception of Apple, almost everybody's doing now round faces. Apple's yes. the only one that's doing square still. Yeah. 
Anything to say? And I mean, about I think that? I, I, like I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I think it's, it's an aesthetic it's, decision. I, I, I like I round. Like That's the aesthetic decision. Round's good. It's again, I Apple like being round. Apple, wouldn't it be different? Yeah. And also, I think that that rounds, unfortunately, if I, you know, it's harder to make a smaller round face. So for me personally, I'm okay with the square because right. I feel like round it's to to get all the 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 stuff there, it's harder for them to miniaturize that. I mean, yeah. I think Pebble did a nice job. Do you still but wear your Apple Watch? I do. Yeah. I think I like I squares actually. I so. I feel like round from a design aesthetic, they just, they look weird on someone's wrist. It's it's like a, it's a square, it's a rectangular thing in the beginning. I don't know. Yeah. I've always worn square watches. Yeah. Well, my Cartier tank watch is a classic square watch. Lots of square See, watches. See, classic. How do people feel about watches when they're no longer classic? I don't know. Yeah, this is, That's, I don't know. I, I, think, I, there's I, a macho, I think there's a macho kind of Ray Donovan element to a big clunky watch. There's so much of us. Nice plug there for Ray Donovan. Great show. I, I was wearing really my Apple show. Watch every day. So I'm looking forward to getting a new one. Yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm curious about this S3. It also, <laughs> you can play Bluetooth music via Spotify from the S3 to a speaker. I mean, this thing basically is this. I think we're it's at. Basically it's, 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 it's a smartphone in your, in your wristwatch. And I think that's kind of what Samsung's thinking is if we could just get all the functionality of a smartphone into a wristwatch now, then you'd have something. You just got to make sure that the battery doesn't explode. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a bad thing, right? <laughs> I mean, imagine that. Like, again, something where the size of it. But, like, imagine if you could give a kid that, right? You don't want to give a younger kid a, a, a phone, per se. But if you said, oh, here, put this watch on, and I can at least text you or call you when you're out at the park or outside or over Susie's house or something, you could still communicate with them. And they only had that one device. They didn't have to carry something in their pocket. That would be huge. It's also going to do something. Uh, that can you tell? Android Wear does not do, which is touch to pay. And it's going to do something right. the Apple Watch doesn't do, which is not only touch to pay, but Apple's, I mean, uh, Samsung smartphones with Samsung Pay work with card readers, swipe card readers, because it sends out a magnetic signal that tricks the card reader into thinking it's a it's a credit card being swiped. The the watch will do that too. You almost sold me on that watch now. That's interesting. Kind of, well, kind you're of, a big guy. We're big guys. We could wear this. We could wear a big yeah. old watch. And then, uh, I mean, I. Here's my question mark: Will it work with anything but Samsung's phone? Because in the past, that's that's been a stopper for some people. I doubt it. Probably not, well, right? If it's running Tizen, can it? I don't know. I don't know what the capabilities are. AT and T has already announced they will sell it, and they, it takes advantage of a feature, new feature AT and T's been touting, and in fact, it explains why AT and T's been touting it, which is that you will have a phone number on your phone that's and the phone number on the watch that are different, but you can tell the phone that the watch phone number is now the phone number to ring when the phone rings. So it's going to, sp in effect, spoof your phone. So you will have one oh. phone number. People's heads will explode. That is yeah. really complicated. And you have to pay for that. Well, of course you have to pay for that. So that's another <laughs> SIM. But yeah, right. Whoa. Yeah, so no. that's the problem, right? Each SIM has a unique phone number, except in this case, you'll be able to have two devices with the same phone number. So really that's what you need is some sort of like dashboard where you control all of your communications from AT&T so or whoever your carrier <laughs> That's what is. I need. Well, no, I'm saying cuz then you could actually set that up so it's you called could Google ignore. Voice. Well, exactly. Uh, I wish Google had I make Google makes me mad. Wish they hadn't just kind of thrown away Google Voice. It Google still Voice is so good. So um, it's, it's it does been work. abandoned. But how long is it going to work for, right? They're not going to cut it off. It's just going to stay there and float in the ether and be the exact it. same it is. I love it. I got five phone numbers. Uh, and, Wh and what's your main carrier service? Um, T-Mobile on the on the Samsungs, Google Fi on the 6P, and I can't wait because I'm going to Europe in two weeks. That Google Fi, I can't wait to try. That's going to be awesome because you're going to get the LTE, yeah. right? Yeah. That's it's awesome. the same price in 19 yeah. countries as it is here. That's so great. That's so that's great. So, we'll see if it works in Russia. I'm going to Russia, too. I know that's going to be fun. Where in Russia? St. Petersburg. Super fun. Ooh, three days in St. Petersburg. I can't, I just, you know, I wonder. I'm hoping, I don't know, I wish Donald Trump would get elected while I'm there. I think it'd be so fun. <laughs> you better make sure you take your fez to Russia. <laughs> but don't take it to Turkey. Not to Turkey. I oh, can't remember not, yeah. what, whether you can or can't. Anyway, let's take a break. We're going to get some wrap. We'll wrap this up. Pick, each of you pick a story from the run that We've got so many more we haven't even got to. So pick something that you, that you think we should have talked about, but Leo's just terrible. I know I got one. Oh, I got several. <laughs> <laughs> well,
Well, Ozzy Osbourne's genome. No, no. The Grumpy Cat lawsuit. <laughs> I mean, there's good stuff in there, and you can now rent Ehrlich's Aviato car. Oh, I'm so mad about that. Okay. 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 When we come back. We had a great week this week on Twit, and we made a little movie, so in case you missed stuff, you can watch this and you'll feel complete. Watch. Previously on Twit. We're never going to surpass this, Mary Jo, but I believe this week we have Outlook Gate, Battery Gate, Webcam Gate, Kindle Gate. Someone who was not from the U.S. sent me a tweet and said, why do you guys keep talking about all what these gates? Yes. It all and started with that. Watergate, the, <laughs> the first scandal. Which has become really the least of the gates, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> Twit Live Specials. All around us, there are tens of thousands of people who are waiting to get into these hollowed halls behind us, filled with the latest in televisions, the fastest in computers, and the greatest in technology. I'm Father Robert Ballister with Twit TV. Welcome to IFA 2016. This week in Google. I am going to make an effort to use Google+. Plus. I, yeah, I, I should too. What else is there? I'm not, I, I think Twitter, it feels more and more as I go back there that all the communications there are very self-serving. None of this stuff is that useful to me. You know what I'm saying? I follow an amazing array of people. Basically, if you are smarter than me, I probably follow you. That explains and why you don't follow me or Jeff. I follow Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Twit, oh. we love you. She follows me, too. That was just, you know, a little byplay. What's coming up this week? Let's find out. Thank you, Leo. This is a short week because of the Labor Day holiday in the U.S., but the tech news never stops laboring. I have two words for you, Apple and Sony. Wednesday is the big day with not one but two companies making big announcements. First, there's Apple. Will we see new iPhones? Will they have headphone jacks? Will there be a 256 gig option? Is it okay for men to buy the new rose gold headphones from Beats by Dre? Will you buy me the new watch that they announce? <laughs> These are the questions that everyone wants to know the answers to. PlayStation also planned an event for this Wednesday. We assume Sony is going to use this gathering to finally open the kimono on the PlayStation Neo 4K cable upgrade to the PlayStation 4 console. We might also see a PlayStation Slim. That's a thinner version that's rumored to be a pretty lackluster product with few improvements to its predecessor. T-Mobile's new unlimited-ish plan, T-Mobile One, also launches this week on September 6th. And finally, the XOXO Festival starts this week in Portland, Oregon. That's a gathering of independent artists doing cool stuff on the internet. Headliners include Anita Sarkeesian of Feminist Frequency, HTML and CES expert Eric Meyer, from Meyer Web, Sarah Jong from Motherboard, and more. We hope to cover some of these happenings and oh so much more on Tech News Today every day at 4 p.m. Pacific with Jason Howell right here on Twit. Thank you, Megan Maroney. And it all begins uh, Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 UTC with our live coverage of Apple's announcement. And I guess while that is, is Sony's announcement exactly the same time? It's a couple hours later, I believe, so um, or maybe maybe it's an hour later. So I think so Apple starts at, at at ten, and I think Sony's is at one. Yeah, no, Sony should have canceled. Every company in the world knows if you're going to say anything, get it over with before Apple. Not. I feel like maybe they just want to fly it under the radar because this is the best sweet rug move that you could pull if you don't want people to know what's going on. I guess. Maybe, I guess. Maybe so. it's not I guess so. But this is like E3 all over again. Remember when E3 happened, you know, during yeah. WWC? Um, yeah, no, this is, I, I get it. Sony might not have realized, although they should have, because everybody had the rumors. Like when they were planning this event out, they were like, for, the, for, the, for, for nothing else, just the fact that like certain outlets are having to pick, do we cover Sony or do we cover Apple? Yeah. And nobody in the right mind is going to choose Sony over yeah. Apple. Well, we'll do what we can to uh, share the Sony news as well. It'll mostly be right. PlayStation, right? The new PlayStation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, our show today brought to you by Wealthfront. Wealthfront is a fabulous solution for anybody who is saving for the long haul. And that should be you because of retirement, uh, rainy day fund. Maybe you're saving for a house down payment, the kids' college fund. Wealthfront solves a big issue. What do you do with that money? How do you save? You don't want to put it in a savings account. That's not going to really grow at all. Uh, that would be like putting it in the mattress. So you got to invest it. But are you going to keep track of these investments? I know a lot of us think, I'm, I was cocky. I was that way. Oh, I can do that. I read all the books. And then you kind of forget about it. And the thing kind of languishes. And pretty soon you realize, that eh, didn't work out so well. Or maybe you go to an advisor. That guy down the street charges 1%, 2 or 3%. Yes. 
every year of what they manage. That means you have to make one, two, or three percent more just to break even. Not to mention the the hidden fees, the transaction costs, all of that. And frankly, some of these advisors, many of them, are charging or are, are, are buying stocks because they get a cut, or they're or you know they get a fee every time you buy and sell. So they make you do it more than you need to. Not with Wealthfront. Wealthfront has no hidden fees, no commissions, no transaction costs. And, and you pay one quarter of 1% a year, not one, two, or 3%, but one quarter of 1% a year. And that's because it's a computer. Wealthfront's software that's designed not to pay attention every quarter or every month, but all the time, constantly rebalancing your investments to maximize your return based on your needs, your, your time frame, your, your, your tolerance of risk. They'll even do things like tax loss harvesting that's kind of complicated most advisors don't even know about wealthfront i want you to take a look i don't you don't need to start uh, although you can get started with as little as 500 dollars. but i would like you to take a look at what they do and when you go to wealthfront.com slash twit you can get their free portfolio review give them your portfolio show it will show you what part is risk you know risky whether it's well diversified what your fees are what your tax bill could be and how you could save money it's really useful information they'll even generate a portfolio the, the exact portfolio they'd invest for you after you answer a few questions. It's really cool. And the software is based on the best books. The, all those books I read, um, people like Charles D. Ellis and Burton Malkiel, they've got 200 years of uh, stock market experience on their board. It's really, really well done. They use ETFs, which is a smart way to give you very low cost but very diversified investment. Read about it. They just introduced their 529 college savings plan, which is like a Roth IRA for uh, higher education expenses. Great for kids or grandkids. There is a reason Wealthfront is growing like crazy. $3 billion in client assets. I, there, I, you've seen the articles. I just saw one in Wall Street Journal where the traditional brokers are moaning about the fact that this computerized trading just does a better job, frankly, and cuts them right out of the equation. Visit Wealthfront.com slash twit. Here's one more good deal. If you sign up there, your first $15,000, not for one quarter of 1%, but free for life. So you can really get a nest egg started there. Wealthfront.com slash twit. All right. I mentioned some stories, but, but let's start with you, O Doctor. Your story of the week. Uh, Apple and money and hiding money and giving oh. out money and bringing money back and getting sued for money and all kinds of stuff. We don't have to talk about any of them. Just let me read the headlines. Of Tim Cook's a pissed. A Apple's $14.5 billion tax bill, what it really means. Apple faces multi-billion dollar tax bill with the EU ruling. Tim 13 billion euros is $14.5 billion retroactive tax. Uh he could send cash back to the U.S. next year. Uh, Tim Cook responds to the rule in the Irish press and his total crap of 0.005% tax rate is a false number. Well, I, I'll be Jiminy Christmas. There's a whole lot of smoke with this fire. <laughs> and I'm just saying, it's not just Apple. Microsoft, oh, too. Yeah, everybody, everybody start looking at Microsoft. Let's start looking Google. at all these people yep. not bringing the money home. Tim you Cook bring says the money it's back. total political crap. He oh. says Apple paid $400 million in the year in question, not 0.005%, but $400 million. He says, I think we were the largest taxpayer in Ireland that year. I'm sure they were. He also says, look, I mean, the, con countries, uh, cities in this country do that all the time. They do, or states do tax breaks to get the development, to get the countries, companies to come into the state or come into the city. Uh, we'll give you some breaks. Because in the long run, we're going to get more jobs and we're going to get more tax money than if somebody else wins you. So How we're going to, and I think that's what Ireland did. The well, EU said they did it illegally. If the EU wants to fine Ireland, fine. But to retroactively demand fourteen and a half billion dollars from Apple, what are they building in Ireland? What what does Apple make in Ireland? Well, admittedly, they don't do. I mean, they have a few thousand employees, <laughs> but it's a tax dodge. But it's a legal tax dodge. And that's exactly. what's wrong with everything. But anyway, I just wanted to say about that. Just go look at all this money. And I, I don't care. I want retro money coming back. I want extra money coming back. I want all these loopholes cut out. I want all these corporations. I know it's the tax. I agree, yeah. but that's the... I'm sorry. That's, I no, that's right. le legislatures need, can need to do that. The EU we, can do that. But but they what they can't do is is say to Apple, you got to give us some extra money. They have to say, we're going to change the law because the, the Apple was following the law. 
Go ahead and say it, Apple. Go ahead and say it to them. Just, just keep fighting the fight. You ain't going to get the money, but just say it. They're not going to get the money. Bring it up everywhere. Yeah. Go talk to Microsoft next. They next on the list. And you know, the All good news Microsoft. is Cook is now saying maybe we'll repatriate some of that money. Because right now, uh, they keep it offshore because if they were to bring it back to the U.S., they'd actually have to pay corporate tax rates in the U.S. And that's like a third of the money shot. Uh, but that's still better than $14.5 billion. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and there's a disadvantage to keeping $200 billion overseas, as Apple does. You can't, in, you can't buy companies in the U.S. You can only buy uh, companies outside the U.S. with that money. That money is not usable inside the U.S. So, in fact, Apple's taken out bonds because they don't have access to that money. Didn't Tim Cook just liquidate? Uh, $65 million Apple stock. God I mean, he still him. holds 110 million. I mean, that him. sounds like somebody trying to buy something on a sneak tip. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Investigate everything. All right. That's, that's my All story. Right. There's Apple your story. Money. Investigate Apple everything. Money. Oh, doctor. Thank you, oh, doctor. How about you, Christina? What do you think we What did we miss today? I mean, that grumpy cat lawsuit. I, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, they I, covered I, this I, on This Week in Law, by the way, and they compared it yeah. to the other lawsuit where the monkey... The monkey, yeah. uh, the PETA lawsuit with, with, with the, the monkey. Right, 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 right. Uh, what I loved about this was uh, was Hudson's headline for, for Gizmodo, which was everyone involved in this $1.8 million uh, grumpy cat lawsuit sucks except the cat. Yeah, because grumpy Cause cat's the only one who's not involved. Grumpy cat, the cat itself, I mean, the owners are terrible. The people, the, the coffee company is terrible. Everybody's terrible except for the cat. God bless the, the cat. cat. Everybody the else cat's is just there. Awful. Do you Have you met grumpy cat? Unfortunately, I've met Grumpy Cat many times. <laughs> I feel bad with Cat. I feel bad. The cat. There's the cat be, I want to hear this story. Unfortunately, is he really People, grumpy? No, the cat's fine. It's just he's, he's got handlers that she has to deal with, and that's the problem. So the, is this the, like a pushy, a pushy like she doesn't want to say that. stage <laughs> parent that's just pushing? It's, it's a brother. And, it's a brother and sister, and yeah, let's just say that yeah. They're horrible let's just say they're people. Not, I mean, you said it. You but said that. I, 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 Leo I, said I, 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 I never met them. I don't know. She I'm wants to keep her relationship with Grumpy Cat. Actually, grumpy no, I don't, really, I don't really care about my relationship with Grumpy Cat. I don't work at Mashable anymore, so I guess I can say it. Yeah, actually, Wait a minute. Did terrible. Grumpy Cat have a special deal with Mashable? Well, it came to South by Southwest like three times. Yeah. For, on like, behalf yeah. of Mashable? At the Mashable house. It was like a whole thing. So now, now, now that I no longer work there, I can say, yeah, you know what? The Grumpy Cat people aren't great. Grump, the cat is fine. The people themselves, not so great. So apparently they licensed uh, the grumpy cat image to a beverage company that sold Grumpuccino. Right. And then there was some sort of uh, dis dis displeasure over money or something. Well, then something. they went further. They didn't just do Grumpuccino. They did grumpy cat roasted coffee. Right. And they're like, oh, so, so you owe us money and you, you've, you've really sullied the name of this whole thing. It's like <laughs> you're you're fortunate that, that I don't know. I, I was really hoping that after the Lifetime movie – Flopped. There like was a hot. Lifetime movie? There was a Lifetime a Christmas special that Aubrey um, Plaza, who's fantastic, uh, voiced Grumpy Cat. And it was a really terrible movie on never and like on every level. Like it was just absolute trash. And not, but it was so bad you couldn't even like watch it ironically and be like, oh, this is this is funny, like Sharknado. It was just bad. And and after that flopped, and not only did it flop like in terms of ratings, but no one tweeted, which is the real like the whole reason. I never you, even you, heard about it. Nobody, yeah, the whole reason nobody tweeted. Tweet. There was no the whole, social media. Was, which which the whole reason you do that movie, right, is to get people tweeting like Sharknado. Oh, and I no can't one believe cared. it's all grumpy. So cat I was really movie. hoping that after the shark after the, the Grumpy Cat Christmas movie fiasco, I was like really hoping that the whole thing would just go away and that these people would go away and that the cat could just, you know, like live on in peace, because I feel for the cat. Um, but no, now we've got to continue to hear about these awful people my arguing Christmas over all. Wish, I wish. I wish I'd meet a friend one on whom I can depend. So, me? You really screwed up your big wish. Okay. Wait a minute. For anyone that that's loves Grumpy yeah. Cat's voiceover? Here we go. Yeah. Goodwill. I don't care. Joy. Mm, no. Egg. That's the worst voiceover. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's I, terrible. I love the actress, but yeah, it probably wasn't a great... Great it's choice. like she yeah. just phoned that in. He's too old. That's actually how she sounds. That's actually you're a loser. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Look at my face. This Christmas. You were talking to me. What are you, some kind of blonde witch? I heard all of that. Stop it. You stop it. You stop it, witch. So what's the story with Grumpy Cat? Does he have some sort of, does she have some sort of unfortunate facial dis disfiguration? Can you stop showing that? I have a weapon in my hand <laughs> off camera and I want to hurt myself. Can we, no, I'm dead serious. Don't put that back on the screen. I'm not going to shield my blade. I'm going to shield this blade. Why, why just is going she about frowning the rest of like that? Why is she frowning because, like that? Is she... Uh, 
That's just, <laughs> that's just that's mean. Just get it off the screen. I can't that's even look up mean. at you unless you get it off the screen. Just stop it. Can we merge it with O Doctor's face? To no, make oh, you merge you a merge grumpy doc my face, and there will be a grumpiness upon you you can't imagine. I tell you that Let's right see. now. There's Grumpy Cat, and there's you don't have to deal with my handlers. Let's just put them in together into oh, one God. amazing mashup. Look. Grokta. Oh, Grumpy Doctor. Look, if I turn into a meme, you're going to have a problem. Owen That's JJ Grumpy Cat. <laughs> It'll cost you more than a phone. All right. I'll, it, unfortunately, we don't have time for Photoshopping, but if anybody wants to send it to me, I'll make sure we post oh, it. Next story. Don't we have another story? Next story. <laughs> Stacy Higginbotham, what's your story of the week? Man, you should I should have gone first because I have nothing lighthearted and fun. I, I can't believe we didn't talk about, you know, hacking local oh, yeah, data or local... No, well, okay, there's Dropbox, right? So Dropbox, six, 68 million, 68 million uh, records revealed. Dropbox was very proactive. They sent out an email to everybody and said, we're going to change your password. Yeah, but it happened five years ago or four years ago. Yeah. 2012. Yeah. But what was yours, Stacey? What was what, 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 what's that you want to talk about? Oh, so mine was the two state election databases. And granted, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Those were crazy. So, yeah, Illinois, also Arizona. Also, mm -hmm. well, okay, so they pulled the data from... The voter registrations, I believe, election yes. databases. Yeah. So this isn't like hacked voting machines, but no, no, well, no. it's like SQL databases. That's coming okay. next. Don't worry about so, that. So yes, yeah. but so I'm looking at this, and I'm like, in the, they're like, look, state and local governments don't hire security officials, so no, you know we kind of can expect these things to happen. And I'm like, you know what? Then don't put it online. Like seriously, Agreed. we're in. An, Russia is already messing with our election cycle. We really don't need this. We really need script keys. When is SQL injections? When I wrote the story and I was like going through yeah. the, the information, I was like, I was like, oh my god, because I started. Twelve think year olds can do this. Yes, I was literally thinking that it freaked me out. I was like, oh my god, every local small jurisdiction is at risk because they're probably using not even they're probably not even using DigitalOcean. They're using like just like the the lowest end of lowest end like you know server that they can get. Probably not hardening anything and like literally, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, like so that was it. Yeah. It's the worst thing in the world <laughs> because that is only the two instances that they caught somebody. Yeah. Okay, just so y'all know, we're not safe out here. Your vote kind of doesn't count sometimes. <laughs> they should immediately. They got electoral every security things. Expert they got all kinds this. of systems. We got lobbyists giving out money to people. Nothing's real. What we need to do is put it on your cell phone because at least everybody looks at their cell phone and they have it tethered to one number and yeah. you get one vote. We need to do something. We're the smartest country in the world, but no, we're so dumb. No, Why no, are we so dumb? No. Every expert understand. says the, 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 the immediately they need to turn off all electronic voting machines and you have to paper do it on balance. paper. Paper, paper, it, it, paper. Please, just uh, paper. That's how we got George Bush. No, 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 no chads. I'm not talking no hanging chads. chads. Just write your vote on a piece of paper. No, no, you could probably do it like via like a scan. There's ways to like do that. it that they're safer, but everybody agrees that the voting machines there are are terribly, terribly. Well, and it's dangerous with Donald Trump saying like things about the election being rigged. Yeah, he's setting it up. Right, right. Because he's so got. So when he loses, what he's setting up is is basically a revolution. Him. Bernie Sanders. People were saying the same thing. Yeah. People were actively going to protest counts where they were doing exit polls, and the poll numbers came out different. People complain about this all the time, but nobody cares. Now that we're scared to death that a, a man monkey might become president, now everybody wants to look at it. But I mean, it's been going on, and it's been an issue, and we need to do something right. to fix it. Uh, I don't know if you watch Silicon Valley. Uh, one of the uh, important plot lines uh, of Silicon Valley. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, I'm so mad about this story. Sorry. <laughs> One of the important plot lines of Silicon Valley uh, comes down to uh, tabs or spaces when you uh, code. Um, yeah. And uh, thank you to Michael Nunez at Gizmodo, who, uh, who actually wrote the story and uh, uh, did some... Uh, was it Michael did the research? No, it was Google developer was Google, Felipe Google, Hoffa. Yeah, Google did the research. He said, well, what is it? What do people use it? So tabs or spaces? And he did the research, and yes, there you go. Spaces win by a mile for every language except Go. I don't know why Go. But every language, people use spaces over tabs. There's all. That's all you need to say. Uh, by the way, that means... That uh, what's his name? The guy in this lost because he was a tab guy, mm -hmm. and uh, his girlfriend who dumped him over this won, <laughs> and she won twice in that case. Uh, 
The best part was as he's trying to demonstrate why you use a tab, he stomps down the stairs, space, 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 and then falls. So, and as long as we're talking Silicon Valley, this is the one that makes you mad. You can now this rent Ehrlich's Aviato car. This is a real car with the Aviato branding. That's, of course, uh, Ehrlich Bachman's bizarre failed startup, the one that he used to fund his startup house. It's a Is Ford. it a failure if he sold it and made no, money and has a not. flop house? Maybe not. His I Ford, don't think it's a failure. His Aviato branded Ford mm. Escape can be rented in, of course, Silicon Valley for $49 a day. Okay, this is not a story. This is what drives me nuts. This is marketing. This is viral marketing that both TechCrunch, Fortune... It is not brilliant. It is, it is an indictment of tech press. I hate it. Oh, capitalism. I like the story. It's hysterical. In oh. fact, I can't. I'm going to rent this. No, you're not. You, no, you're not. No, you're not. They had you are forbidden from renting. That I'm going to rent this vehicle, drive to O'Doctor's house, and deliver to him an exploding Note Seven. You are forbidden from renting that vehicle. You will not fund this kind of foolishness. You're right. This is a very this is a very puffy piece, but it is August. It, yeah. it, it is August. News. There's there's oh. there's hackers running around, you know. They di they did get by the way, they got the guy who hacked Linux uh the Linux kernel dot org site at a, at a traffic stop and he faces <laughs> he I love that. There's a picture of Tux in a in the jail. He's facing <laughs> a potential forty years in prison. Donald Ryan Austin of El Portal. Florida is going to appear in court in San Francisco later this month on four counts of intentional transmission causing damage to a protected computer because he hacked into kernel.org where the Linux kernel is stored in 2011, stole the credentials of one of the server admins, tried to install malware inside the site, caused all sorts of unfortunate unhappiness and that sounds really excessive to me yeah. in a state where you could go to jail for three months for harming a person. An interesting point, I, isn't I, it? An interesting I mean, point. I'm just saying, like, but I, we don't know. I, he may not get 40 years. That's just. Oh, the, he may not. I'm just saying when you throw that number out there. I mean, seems like a lot. That, I'm not even going to honor that dude by using his name, but I'm just saying that dude, his max would have been six years. Yeah. If he would have got that, I know. Did three months. I'm like, it's because computer crime scares people, and they and they really. Um, the, the legislatures uh, really went kind of crazy overall. Yeah, that's crazy. And I had mentioned it, so I have to mention it again. Ozzy Osbourne is going to have his genome sequenced because no one can understand how he's still alive. <laughs> he's 62, he but he's used more marijuana, alcohol, and cocaine than people twice his age. Okay, but that's Keith Richards is still alive, too. And he's the other one. Yeah. And well, they, obviously, though, that's the key to life. Duh, if you were doing that, you could survive. This is from The Guardian. I was curious, he explained to the Sunday Times, giving the swimming pools of booze I've guzzled over the year, not to mention all of the cocaine, morphine, sleeping pills, cough syrup, LSD, rofenol, you name it. There is no plausible medical reason why I should still be alive. Maybe my DNA could say why. Maybe he's not alive. Maybe he's a zombie. Sharon! Uh, that was a terrible Ozzy Osbourne. I apologize for that. And I think we, uh, I know there's great stuff. Is it true that this SpaceX rocket was destroyed by a drone? No one knows, but I've just started that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds legit. I like Sounds it. Legit. I like it. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg is very disappointed. Yes. Mark was in Africa. There's a very funny exchange. <laughs> uh, I think, it, where, where did I read that? Between, uh, I think maybe it was New Yorker, between Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. Elon's texting him mark i got some bad news because on that on that spacex rocket which exploded uh was a 200 million dollar satellite for internet.org okay we don't really need the weird music um i don't see a drone anywhere there though that would be pretty terrible if that were the case poor elon musk that's going to be i think that's actually going to be a big hardship for a spacex that nobody was in it it wasn't even being launched it was just being tested However, the that's Amos, why we test Amos so you can six, learn. That's why you test and make it better. Uh, Mark's not happy, but they got insurance, right? You do insure satellites, yes. Must cost a lot to get satellite insurance. Yeah, that that that's uh, I was looking at like a, a a comment thread on that, and it was like it depends on because I think the satellite I think it was like ninety five million, so I guess you've got to kind of figure out like what 
how much do you insure it for? Do you spend, if it's like 10 million, then it's worth it, right? But if it's like 50 million or, or 80 million, like meh. Yeah. You know, and Google, and let's face it, Facebook can't afford it, right? C cannot? Can. Oh, yeah, of course. Possibly. Can. That's like cigarette, I mean, yeah. that's Mark's cigarette money for the year. No, they, they, they for, can for afford Facebook, it, but they want to rebuild it again. Right. Yeah, but this is also it's a, a big strategic effort for right. them. Right. Like, right. Getting... And he was in Africa to celebrate this, right? Because that's where yes. it was going to work. Um, okay. Okay. I'm going to let you off the hook. You've done a wonderful job. There are so many more stories we could talk about, but golly, after two hours, who cares? <laughs> and it's Labor Day. And it's there's Labor some, Day and you're slaving on Labor Day. What are you going to do, Stacey? You're going to have a Austin barbecue? Yep. Tomorrow, barbecue and swimming. Oh, what fun. Nice. Uh, what will be the adult beverages served? Because I could, I could be there. Oh, um, what what do you not like? <laughs> oh no. my God! Do you hate me? No, I'm just having fun with you. <laughs> First, uh, you don't follow me on Twitter. Now you try to kill me. I know it's done. Uh, no, that'll be fun. I think that'll be a lot of fun. How about you, uh, Christina, in Manhattan? What do you what do what do? Or you're well, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. You're in Brooklyn. What do Brooklynites Brooklyn. do on Labor Day? I I mean, similar drinking. Uh, so there will be some drinking. Um, I can't drink too much because I've got a, a 7 a.m. flight on Wednesday or oh. on Tuesday. Rather. You got somewhere to so. be uh, on Wednesday? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got somewhere to be, the Apple event. So <gasps> I, I got to fly out on, on, on Tuesday uh, for that. So, uh, But there will be some day drinking tomorrow for sure. We will get some cameras down there to the Bill Graham Memorial Auditorium. Maybe we can catch you as you come out. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, as soon as I'm done with my uh, my hands on and and yeah. time with that stuff. If, That's if the I, reason I would... to go because yeah. there are a couple of things. Andy Anako has always says you want to kind of watch the kind of the gestalt of the executives as they're talking and announcing. Exactly. You can maybe read some between the lines there, but also the hands on afterwards is always of interest. That that that, that, that that's the real value yeah. because it, it, you know the live log. Anybody can do from right. from remote, you know, and and that well, is. We're going to watch the but, stream together, and it, we'll see, you know, all of that. Exactly, and so the the real thing, the real reason you go is is for for the hands on time, yeah. you know, just to be able to offer your impressions and get photos and do Facebook lives and all that stuff. Oh, doctor, let me see Leah's uh, Halloween uh, costume one more time. It looked like she had a an actual katana sword in her hand. She did. Her actually, her costume sitting over there, and the sword is the sword uh, like, right here. It's on the floor. You're giving your daughter a sword? Oh, my God. Nice. Oh, my nice. geez, Louise. Okay, good. Good. That's good. Uh, That's good. She's been handling swords since she was four. She's a pro. Wow. Uh, Christina, do me a favor. Yes. Pour, pour some out for my homies and the headphone jack when you're out there. <laughs> pour, some out, pour some out for my phone. Just pull a little Wayne for us there. Just, just go to the corner liquor store, wherever. There's one out there. Yeah. Get you a forty. Yeah, get Make you sure forty. You tip it get out you a little cold, cold malt liquor. Um, Owen, uh, besides plugging the fact that I am on the uh, the Doctor Cast, what's it called? Doctales. Doctales. I love that name. Yeah, uh, and you can get that at iqmz.com. Anything else you want to plug? Um, no, I just want to plug. Uh, supreme happiness and joy. I'm trying yes. to get some positivity back yes. in my world yes. because of what happened. But like I was saying earlier, don't ever feel bad for me because my life is great. I get to sit here and suffer with you on a Labor Day. I mean, enjoy I myself. I never feel bad with for you guys. You are just on a Labor Day weekend. You are just uh, you're you're full of life. And I'm going out tonight and going to go have some drinks later and I'm going to have some drinks tomorrow. And you got to come hamburgers. here. You got to come here because we had you know remember we had your uh, your body outline on the wall in the old place. And you couldn't bring that with you. We what did you bring do with that wall with us? Huh? What did, you, what did you do with all those signatures? That just, they're still there. They're gone. You had really important people know, sign that wall. I know. We had a, Nolan Bushnell drew a Pong. Ah. Uh, I know. I know. But the same thing happened to Tech TV. We had amazing stuff. Neil Gaiman had come in and drew a Sandman cartoon on our set walls. Uh, it's a tradition in studios. You, you, you have people sign the wall. And um, when the set's down, it's gone. I mean, uh, uh, but we can start we, over. A new tradition. Don't we have the technology to scan that and then just like uh, have somebody print it yeah, out? Yeah, I was supposed to take wall. pictures and I, I didn't get around to it. There's pictures on the internet. People send them to me all the time because people signed inside my body uh, to yeah. tell me people were doing so that. We, we, so, yeah. we put O'Doct against the wall and I outlined his body with a magic marker and then people would sign inside it. It stayed pristine for like a good year and then yeah, somebody yeah. went and soiled once, my image. Once, once the dam breaks, it's just out of control. Thank you all for being here. We do uh, This Week in Tech every uh, Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. Rain or shine, holidays not accepted. 
3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC. We love having you in the studio. Great studio audience today. Email tickets at twit.tv if you, too, would like to suffer uh, in the audience with us. Uh, if you don't, though, uh, you, you know, you don't watch live, you can always get it on demand. Audio and video made available at your convenience, either from the website, twit.tv, or from your favorite podcatching appliance. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Another twit this is, is in the can. Bye-bye.